well, it, it's telling me I'm live, so I must be live. So welcome uh, anyone who's watching um, and maybe even watching this back. Um, it's great to see you all here. Um, we've got a couple of guests tonight. It's Robbie Burns night. So, you know, it's nice to honour the beard, honour honor, honor him and give him a wee toast. Um, usually we have some haggis and it's really strange doing this uh, online and virtual and not having haggis in front of me, um, which is really, really sad, um, you know, because that's what I want. Now, I do have some here in the house. I could make it myself uh, and that could, be, you know, that could be an option, but I couldn't get it out to participants, which, you know, which really annoyed me. Um, Usually we'd be doing this in a, in a venue and we could have food brought to us or we'd, you know, obviously, you know, eating in a restaurant or something. So great to see everyone. It's nine whiskies, nine Scottish whiskies. Uh, and we're literally going around the, you know, around the regions. Um, so we'll go around the six regions of Scotland. There's a couple of extras in there for, for, for good taste. And yes, morning, Shane. Um, and, and evening, Connor. So it's like, it's good to, to see that people are tuning in from different parts of the the world um, to, to, to see what we've got. But look, it's it's Rabbi Burns Day. It's also apparently um, a birthday for one of our distilleries. Um, so we're going to be drinking uh, Wolfburn. It's going to be our first dram of the evening. So we're going to order one to nine. And number one tonight uh, is from Wolfburn Distillery. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're having a Highland um, whiskey uh, and we've got the number 155. Okay, so it's a small batch. Okay, the 155. Um, small batch, limited release, 46%. So it's the weakest of the whiskies tonight. We're starting off at 46%, nice and easy. Um, and listen, port cast finish uh, coming from the small batch. So first fill uh, maturation in X, uh, first fill bourbon barrels, so first fill X bourbon um, barrels. Um, <laughs> I can know, listen, I should have had that beard since Christmas. I, can, I know, do you know what? I really need, I really need to be groomed. I really need groomed. I really need to be in somewhere getting the clippers in, you know, getting a proper haircut and stuff. But do you know what? I thought it, it, it's rough, it's rugged, it's Scottish, it's, uh, it's all those uh, things. And it's, and it's freaking lockdown, which means I can't do what I really want to be doing. Um, but yeah, so port caskets, so there's the port cask finish on here. Natural colouring, uh, there's no mucking about. The guys up at Wolfborn are spot on, <coughs> spot on people. Um, and we've had some great encounters already with the guys up there. But it's their birthday, so we can toast them and say happy birthday. We can do that. I think that'd be really good. Um, I think for me, it's about cracking it open. So everyone who has the box tonight, um, Lovely big presentation box tonight. Glassware, bottles, all labelled one to nine. Number one is the wolf burn. And here. Yeah. Love that. It's very, very opening. Um, nose, absolutely brilliant. We've got the, the initial vanilla nose on there, which I think is great. Okay, so we've got the initial nose of vanilla, but also a little bit of chocolate. You know that we've done. I, I've actually done this uh, this exact whiskey. I've done it recently um, with Mark from Wolfborn, and we've had uh, you know a really great conversation about this because their core range stuff is really nice, spot on. It's really you know it's it's, it's hitting the mark. Young, remember, really young distillery. Uh, the now most northerly distillery in Scotland, um, overtaken uh, Old Pulteney. Although I believe there's a, potentially there's another one coming online, but I think, look, they do right. They do, they're doing really well with their, their releases, and I really like these limited runs finishing off in um, different casts, so this one being the port cast. Yeah, oh, it's warm. It's a warm mouthful. And mm, toffee, honey, but really, and for this time of year, which is really good, because I've just driven around, you know, the vast majority of, of of Northern Ireland today, dropping off boxes. But literally, it's that warmth, you know, that you need from those kind of 
um, there's kind of deeper fruits, really red kind of berries in here, like red berries, but stewed red berries, really nice on the on on the palate. And the finish is nice. It's not too excellent, Robert. Uh, good to see you this evening from Isla. Um, it's not too short. It's a lovely finish. It's just it's just mid mid range finishing here. Um, but has a lovely warmth, really kind of settles nicely just in the upper part of the chest. Yeah, and a lovely wee hint there. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint the exact fruits, but it's, yep, stewed. Yeah, stewed summer fruits that have managed to make themselves, you know, available just now uh, in, 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 the, in, in the cold autumn. You know, and then into the winter. Yep, love it, love it. And you know what? Don't don't be sad for not ordering a box. Um, you know, it was a, it was a good uptick. Rabbi Burns is revered. You know, uh, here in, in in Northern Ireland as much as he is in Scotland, people really do you know follow him. Um, really have this. He's he's iconic. If you look at Belfast just now, you know we're empty, so you you can. Walk around the streets just now. All shops are shut. Um, but if you look up, if you're smart enough to, to 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 look up in Belfast right now, you will see on every street in the city centre, you will see Robert Burns's face. You know, do we see that in Glasgow? Do we see that in Edinburgh? Do we see that in Dundee or Aberdeen? Do we see Rabbi Burns's face everywhere you look at this time of year in those big cities? I'm not sure, but Belfast does. Belfast really goes all out, you know, and shows us images of Robbie Burns uh, and keeps us, you know, thinking about him. So, you know, he's, he's influential, isn't he? He's influential here, influential in Scotland. I think he's a, I think he's a wild, wild influence. You know, he's got this whole, you know, dysphoria of people who believe in maybe what he's been writing about. Um, one of our guests tonight, uh, David Pratt, he usually, and, and, and I have to say usually, comes in with the, the bagpipes and pipes in the, you know, the haggis, and, and unfortunately, we just don't have that opportunity. We don't have that opportunity. And uh, he's, he's actually going to come on and do some poetry for us, which I think is, which is, you know, cracking. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about, from Dave's perspective, what, you know, Rabbi means to certain people. Um, and I think that'd be very important. To, and, and it'd be nice to see people in the comments talking about Rabbi and what they think of him. Um, I will come out and say, like, I do think they love these women. I love these whiskey. They love this song, you know, and they're things that I think we can all, you know, relate to in certain ways. Um, oh, that's good, Garth. I'm glad you found a 155 sample. It's just, it's just worth, you know, tucking into. Um, but yeah, uh, and good to see you, Michael. So yeah, perfect. Look, I hope people enjoyed that one. I know that we've got a couple of, you know, people in the wings that we can bring on and have a, a, an interesting chat. Um, and and like we'll go some of these whiskies. I hope hope really interest people and really get people's imagination. And hopefully we can, you know, on the Instagram page and on the Facebook page, you'll see me putting up the pictures of these bottles, a little description about them. You know, so you won't be lost. You know, you can go back on, have a look at it, maybe find it where it's been. You know, you can purchase it at. Uh, if it gets, you know, you know, raving reviews, maybe people have tried them. Maybe people want to you know, tell us what they think of them. Um, but yeah. So Connor, yeah, sorry, it was there was an Irish cigarette brand called Sweet Afton that had Barnes portrait in the front. Yep, Sweet Afton. Yep, you're quite right. A lot, and again, a lot of that memorabilia, Sweet Afton memorabilia. If you go into the Duke of York, uh, f go upstairs into uh, into the rooms up there, you'll see a lot of that advertising from Sweet Afton up there. Um, you know, here in Belfast, quite specific with that. Um, you know, I I, I actually even didn't even think about that, but there's. Do you know what? there's so much advertisement with Burns on it? You know, that I, I say very iconic, a, an iconic figure, you know. Thanks very much for the for the, for the link there. I will not click it just now. I will go and click it at a later date. But thank you very much for that. Um listen, Wolfburn, Highlands, region number one, sorted. We've done the Highlands. Yeah, we've been there, we've done that, we've tasted it. I liked it. It's nice, it's warming, uh, it's a young liquid. And again, it's for, out of this. We're going actually in ages. So this is a non-age statement. 
So this is our first one, non-age statement. The rest we're going in order of its of its malt age, you know. So we're kind of running through uh, uh, in, in in terms of its age, but the rest are cast strength. So it was really hard for me to kind of do I go down the the, the, the ages or do I go down in the cast strengths? What do I, what do I give people first? What do I give people last? And that was very tough. So I went with ages only, um, and particularly because it's a birthday or. You know, it's a celebration of Burns specific on the day, but Wolf Burns' birthday anniversary. Let's run it through here. Um, and his sister Agnes is buried in Dundalk. Wow, wow. Now I didn't know that specific, but I'm sure if I'd googled him as much as possible, I'd have found that. So his sister Agnes, which I think is one of those great names. If people don't know the the name Agnes, um, I don't know how common it is here and. In, 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 in Ireland, um, but Agnes is pretty common in Scotland um, in certain parts, and actually a lot of people favour the, the 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 reverse of that name. So I have a lot of friends are they're christened Agnes, but they don't call themselves Agnes; they call themselves Senga, and you know the the reverse of the name, which I think is one of those interesting wee names that you can reverse and have a bit of fun with. Uh, but like you know, people shortening Margaret to Peggy, and you know having a bit of fun. Senga is always one of those uh, names uh, that, that kind of confuse people. Good, that Garth. Yeah, maybe some of the Wolfborn stuff hit and miss, but this one is a nice variant. Yeah, and, and look, I hope people do come round and have a, have a have a good chat with it. So look, we're going to leave that one aside. We're going to move on. I want to take the Hazelburn before we bring in um, some of our guests. I want to, you know, rattle on with an RE drink here. Um, so all the way down to Campbellton, all the way down to Campbellton, and we're looking at, not the Springburn, yep, yeah. okay, we're lo looking at the Hazelburn, uh, and we've got a 10 year old, uh, single casking here, 55.4%, so that's 55.4%, um, refill Sauterines cask, right, limited to 282 bottlings, and bottled off in 2018, 10 years old, cast strength, refill Sauterines cask. Um, originally, I think this bottle went all the way out to Israel. I don't think it was sold here. I think it went to Israel to be sold. Um, but yeah, that's number two in your box. So number two in your box. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I picked this one. I mean, it's, I suppose it's easy for me to pick a uh, Campbelltown. You know, we've got plenty. We've got Glen Scotia. We've got um, you know the the, the the mighty spring spring bank specific, um, you know, but the Hazelburn triple distilled, and I'm thinking the connection here, you know, with with you know with Irish whiskey, the triple distilled element to everything, you know, triple distilled is not common practice in Scotland, not common at all. You know, we've got handful, uh, literally handful of distilleries that that have that practice. Of, uh, of of triple distilling and you know Springbank to me would be one of those it's just a it's just a memorable you know distilling you know heritage with family and a big connection to Belfast you know so if we talk about the Mitchells and we talk about the the, the Mitchells of Belfast and the Mitchells of Campbelltown this is the same family it is the same people you know we've got a direct link between a massive you know Belfast brand and, and distillery um, through 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 Mitchells uh, with the connection with uh, the Springbank distillery. So look, Hazelburn is part of that distill uh, distilling family uh, at Springbank and Campbelltown. This, oh my lord! Do you know what it's like? It's like big peaches or something. You know, like you know. Peaches and in, in a kind of in a in a, in a, in a in a syrup, you know, and you've taken them out, and it, and you're maybe going to have it with ice cream or something. I don't know what you're going to have it with. Maybe custard. I used to have tin fruit and custard, but that is a beautiful smell. The nose in that is unlike, yeah, it's unlike many whiskies that I've had in the past. That is that's big and bold on the nose, and do you know what? I'm expecting it to be punchy here. And we've got alcohol, so I'm expecting there to be a big kick on the on the taste. Um, that does not let you down. 
chunky, thick, really thick. And really uh, condensed, that condensed flavour that, that I just spoke about. That it is a massive, massive fruit. Yeah, it's definitely this. You know, ap apricots, peaches. It's got it's it's screaming. Um, you know, that kind of tinned fruit with the syrup. It's it's that's what it's screaming. You know, and really, and really well balanced. Oh my lord, the the finish is just superb because it it just encroaches upon your mouth and then just starts to warm. Another warm, really warm whiskey. I know I've been out in the cold all day. I know it's freezing here and. It was a wee bit late getting on because actually driving around Northern Ireland, dropping off whiskey boxes, is pretty damn hairy at the time, you know, <laughs> this time of year. You know, there's roads with uh, just ice. I mean, there's just the, the, the ice and snow. There is just no, I mean, we, we literally had a flurry of snow for, I think, one day. One day of snow this year. And all of a sudden, the entire country comes to a standstill. I mean, I'm going to blame Phil Crawford. If Phil Crawford listens to this, I'm going to blame him. He's something to do with grit and roads. Um, so if he hears me, I went round today on some of the smallest little roads that we have, and I was like this. You know, I was all over the place. But I'm wondering a lot, because I've been out in the cold all day, if these are just warming me up, keeping me nice and warm, because this is this is lovely and warm. I'm going to have to come back to this one as well. I think I want to come back to them and talk about them a little bit more, um, maybe with some of my guests. But look, I'm going to bring on... I'm going to bring on Dave because I think look, it's about Ravi Barnes, and, but it's not. It's about the whiskey, but it's about Ravi Barnes, and we should really have Dave to come on and look. Let's listen a little bit to some of the poetry, um, and, and maybe we'll get a wee political debate on the go. I like this, you know. It's it's nice to have a, a bit of banter. I know some people don't like mixing whiskey and politics. I don't really care. I think it's all for the you know. We're all chatting. Politics to me is everything, um, and, and 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 nothing at the same time. You know, just like my whiskey. Um, look, we'll bring him on. Let's see if we can do this. Add to stream. Hello, are we ready, Dave? You can give me a wee wave if you are. Um, yeah, he's he's always ready. Dave, we're I'm here. ready. Yes. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Okay, Paul. Oh, hundred percent. Like you're flying. Perfect. Perfect. I liked your little chat there about uh, Robert Burns's sister Agnes being in in Dundalk. Uh, she died at the age of eighty-two. There's a big pillar in the graveyard. And there's a big pedestal to Robert Burns built down there in 1859, a hundred years exactly after Robert Burns was born. And there was a big community. And the reason why they did it, the, the cigarettes are called Swift Afton, was in a, a pilgrimage and a, an honor to his uh, pedestal being there. And they kept them going until about maybe 30, 40 years ago. So there you go. And that's a little bit trivia for you. She lived till she was 82, and her husband was the, the gamekeeper of the main big kind of estate round there, and he built it all up. He was from Scotland as well. But he was a good uh, 30, I think she was 16, 17 years older than she was. And uh, obviously he died, and and she stayed there to the rest of her days. Uh, funnily enough, there's a, there's, a, the, there's a Burns Club in Belfast, and they have an annual pilgrimage down there around about the July fortnight. And they go down there and have a look and see what's going on. So if any of your uh, people and listeners want to get involved in that, uh, just give you a call and then you can give me an I'll pass you on yes. to Brian Cassidy. You know? Yeah, yeah. Now, Steve, I, uh, I, just, I just I just want to quiz you on that. Dundalk. I mean, like what makes a what makes a lady from, from Ayrshire, you know, settle in Dundalk? Is it just the fellow she meets? Is I mean, what's the draw for women? In that period, absolutely. Go to Dundalk. Absolutely, absolutely. It was her husband. The husband got a job as a market gardener, and he ended up being taken on right. by the the estate. I do a burn. I do an immortal memory round this over here, yeah. and I wish I could remember it uh, to to my mind. But it's it's very interesting stuff. She lived over here for I think it was 40, 45 years, maybe. She married late in life. Fantastic, fantastic, and she was very proud of her of her brother, um, and she she never lost. Apparently, she never lost her ears or twang, and people found her very hard to understand. Um, but can, there you go. Can, We're all called that. I can imagine. 
Uh, now, uh, as you can see, uh, I have to, obviously, I think I've met a few of you before because I've done one or two bits and pieces with you in the past, Paul, yeah. and you can see that I'm wearing this tartan jacket, and I can assure you, um, the only reason I got this jacket was because I was bored in lockdown when I was furloughed by my work. And you know yourself, you get onto the, the internet, and I saw this uh, tartan dinner jacket, and I thought, this is a cut of my jib. However, nobody allows me to wear it with the wife, so so now, anytime I get a chance, it's going on, and, and, and I can't really be, be held accountable for what I wear. I was going to say, Paul, what I will do, if it's okay with you, is we'll, we'll start off with one wee poem that, that everyone knows, and then maybe, oh, well, you can cut me in later on, I'll maybe do a couple more. One I'll do just now, obviously, is the address of the haggis, because that's what everyone knows. Yes. And then we'll take it from there. As you were alluding to, more than happy to get involved in any political discussion that you want to do. Good. Uh, and I, I might even tell you in the fullness of time, other bits and pieces, but uh, we'll take it from there and we'll start off with the address to the haggis and hopefully you'll enjoy this, ladies and gentlemen. And, and I believe there's people from all over the world and, and, and I wish you a good St. Andrews, not St. Andrews Day, Burn Supper Day. Well. I hope everything's going well. So we'll start for your uh, address to the haggis and it goes some, normally I'm standing up and doing this and, and going around the, the, the country and there's normally haggis on the ceiling, haggis on the floor, haggis on the windowsill and normally haggis on the door. So we, we try and keep it a wee bit away from that just now, but here we go. Prayer for your honest sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race, boon them all, you tack your place, plain straight or fair. Wheel, are you worthy of a grace? Your groaning trencher there you fill, your herd is like a distant hill. Your pen would help to mend the mill in time of need, and through your pores the dews distill like amber bead. His knife, tea rustic, labor decked, and cuts you up with ready sight. Trenching your gushing entrails, breath like on a ditch. Then, oh, what a glorious sight, warm, reeking rich. Then, horn for horn, no stretch and strive, deal back the hindmost on the drive. For all the wheels felt tight for life are bent like drums. And all good men may like to ride. <coughs> they thank you, Hums. Is it the or your French or goo or all the old that would stir us through your fricassee would mark you spew with perfect scunner? Looks doon without such a sneering view and sick of dinner. Poor deal, Paul. Over his trash is freckless as a withered rash, his spindle shank, a good whip lash is neve in it. Through bloody floods or fields to dash, oh, how unfit. But, Mark, the rustic hag is fed. The trembling earth resounds his tread, taking his rally neighbor blade. He'll make it whistle, and legs and arms and heeds will sned like taps of thristle. Ye powers that mark mankind your care and dish them out their bill of fare. Old scorchers want these stinking wares like jouts and luggies. But if you wish, her grateful prayer, ye her a haggis. Slon Jeva. Slon Jeva, indeed. <sighs> and listen, Dave, thank you. And I'm, I'm thinking that some people might have had some haggis at home. Maybe they've cooked it themselves. Maybe they've done that. That would be great, you know. Um, I, it's, 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 it's iconic, isn't it? It's just iconic with burns, with burn suppers. You didn't get away from it, you know, and uh, it's always it's always going to be said, you know. It's always going to be said. Burn, burn. The haggis was very hard got over here, as you're probably very aware. Yeah. Uh, I'm the the president of the the St Andrew Society here in Belfast, and I'm very proud to do so. Um, and a lot of the members were finding haggis very very hard to get, and I don't know if that's to do with the new Brexit uh, uh, possibly regime that's come through. I'm not casting any dispersions, but it's certainly been a, an issue for a lot of my membership and I'm sure a lot of your your yeah. your friends as well. Do you know what I as I say I have some here and unfortunately just because of my uh, timing issues with the with the ice and stuff today and the snow, uh, I'm not I wasn't able to get home and cook it for myself. But I have you know I have the Scott Howie stuff, you know, from Perth. Um mm -hmm. 
So I, you know, I managed to get that, and that's coming in from uh, from the Sainsbury's, you know. So I've managed to get that there from the Sainsbury's, you know. But um, yeah, it's I, I think we've had, I think we've seen that recently, you know. And even the last couple of years, remember, I think we we spoke about the, the the lack of haggis, you know. We used to be some it's, good butchers. Um, we, we, you know, there's still one guy in. in there's a guy in Moira that makes his own stuff, and uh, he's been doing that for years. But uh, there used to be a guy on the. In East Belfast as well, they used to make it too, but uh, yeah. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure where he is now. But well, do you know, I was let down tonight because what I wanted to do, because I, I knew that we couldn't, you know, I couldn't just go around and give everyone lots, little bits of haggis. I couldn't do that. That just would have been impractical. But what I was going to do, I was going to try and get pizza ordered. Now, I'd used pizza places before, and we've got haggis on the pizza. Now, the two places I've used in the past for pizzas no longer do them. And I'm like, what's the t- what's the change from last year to this year? What's the difference? There is no difference, you know. And you should be offering it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I, I took, I think I took, you know, last year maybe four or five uh, haggis pizzas from one place, you know, specifically. I'm not even going to give them the name on the on on here to to give them any business. I'm going to say I'm disappointed in the two places specifically. One's a major chain across the whole of the UK, and the other one's a, a, a local chain to to Belfast, Manchester, and Glasgow. But you know, it's. It's um, you know, it's very, yeah, disappointing, you know, because I wanted to get pizza out to people, and it was probably the quickest way to do it. Disappointed at the end, you know, when I phoned round, they went, no, not this year. But it, but it's a hard thing. It's a hard it's a hard sell, Paul, because as you're, we first met each other when I was selling haggis, and you you got in touch with me many many years ago. Now you know, yes. before you yes. had the beard, oh. when I had hair, and before I was white, and. Uh, <laughs> It was a few years ago, but um, yeah. what uh, there's a guy there's a, you've heard of McSween's haggis. Now I, I used yes. to do a lot of brown summers with Jimmy McSween, and Jimmy McSween's a, a very good friend of mine. And uh, when I came over here, I've been over here ten years, and he said, "Look, Dave, would you mind uh, trying to punt my haggis in, in in Ireland? I'll give you the best rates possible." And of course, I went. I'm not a salesman, but I'll try my best. Hardest sell in the world because. Over here, it's you have haggis one day. In Scotland, you'll have haggis maybe once or twice a month, if not more. Here, it's once a once a year, and it was a very hard sell, and and it's very hard to get that, you know. Yeah, which is a shame for, because I think it's a great staple food that, for, that for does says what it says. For people who know me, like I, I mean, I've had, I've had a lot of jobs, right? I've had a lot of jobs, and I've always been in work I, since fifteen. I've always had a job, right? I made it, I made it quite clear. Didn't matter what I did. I mean, I might have, you know, I, I don't know how many letters I have after my name from being at university for so many years as well. Always had a job. One of the jobs I had, I worked at a BT call center a long, long time ago. But, but they had their own like, um, you know, food van outside. They had their own restaurant inside, but outside mm-hmm. was a wee food van always there. And here, every day, I must have put on, I don't know how much weight I put on, but every day I went out there and I got myself a wee sub. A wee sub roll, I made them make it for me. Sub roll, mozzarella cheese, haggis. Cooked, you know, like a panini would be cooked, but in a sub roll, you know? Uh-huh. Unreal. Un- oh, oh. And you add a wee bit of sweet chilli sauce to that, you're flying. But that was a daily occurrence. You know, haggis was, you know, it's served daily in, in places, you know, it's served daily in a wee food van, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I just... I, I think once you get it, you get it. No, I mean, once you Absolutely, like it, I think you buy once it. tasted, once tasted, you never move on. I, no. I, I still to this day have a wee slice of haggis like back pudding with a, with a, a an egg on top, and it's fantastic in a row. But that's un, just un, unreal, un, unbelievable. But then um, again, you don't get to twenty stone without trying these things. <laughs> you know? And here you've, you, you were saying, but you have lost weight. I mean, you have done. I mean, you've you've done incredibly well. I, I did. Yeah. I lost. Uh, I lost about. I uh, lost about five stone. I lost uh, six inches off my chest, 11 inches off my waist. So, wow. Did okay. Did okay. That's, you've that, you've that's got to try, impressive. you know. It's oh. pretty impressive. No, I mean, pretty I, I'm impressed with that. Um, Thank you very yeah, much, Paul. But you, no, no I'll let you carry on with your your, well, I think, your, I think, your I think what we should do here, I think we should just move on to the next whiskey, the third whiskey. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, we should do we should do that. Do you want to stay on screen or do you want to? You know, I'll, I'll I'll let you take the the centre stage and get me back when uh, get you me want back me. Get on. Good man. Right, we'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much. See you nice. Thanks very much. So pleasure. Far. So yeah, okay, that was great. Was, you know, 
It's great to have the address, the haggis, even though we don't have lots of haggis around us. So I'm sorry for that. But, you know, uh, Belfast Whiskey Club, you know, a normal state, normal place. You know, that's what we do. We have we have the food, you know, and we don't let people down, um, you know, in, 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 in regular time. Okay. So we're going to move on to whiskey number three. So whiskey number three is um, um, another single malt. We've gone from a 10-year-old. I said we're going, you know, kind of in a, 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 <laughs> a numerical order. We're going to go for uh, an 11-year-old, um, Speyside, no Kelly. Um, again, it's um, port. So we've got port influence. This time it's fully matured uh, in port. Okay, so here we go. Um, if everyone can see that label. So it's the... Now I say Glenallachie, but I'm sure other people would say it completely differently. But I would, I'm would. i going to say Glenallachie. Okay, uh, Glenallachie. And that's what I'm going to go with. So we've got a, uh, an 11-year-old, uh, again, dated on in 2018, uh, 60 percent look at this big bold alcohol coming through here but yes full port pipe uh, maturation um distilled in 2007 so yeah part of the the single cask range let's have a wee pop pop is just great pop, pop is great but i think the color on this one is just absolutely superb it's got this look really kind of pink hue coming through here just a slight pink hue. Um, well, we're not, we're not, um, we're not being let down with that smell. It smells great. And again, it's. I know with the first one, it was a, it was a, you know, it, it was automatic. We had that vanilla. We don't get that vanilla. We're not getting that at all. We know that we, we, we got from the old farm. Um, Oh, you're funny, Sean. Sean, you're funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in instead, what we're getting um, specifically here is that kind of rich, kind of figgy note, um, and, a, and, a, and an orange peel potentially on the nose, which is really nice. Um, yeah. I, I, and we know we're going to get a lot of alcohol here, you know, so 60%, be careful, you know, you've got 50 mil, you know, measures there, um, be, <laughs> just be careful, you know, keep some for a rainy day. Um, mm. I'm really, that's just a lot of, I took a big mouthful there and it was a lot to get through. It was a lot of full on flavour, big on boiled sweet, boiled sweeties. Um, There's like a, even a hint of like towards the very end, like a kind of, like a coffee note, or like a really kind of roast coffee note, which is really nice. Um. But that it's that really big stewed fig note, stewed fruit. It's 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 even got the kind of biscuity part of those figgy biscuits that you get. That's really really full on. Um, I wasn't expecting to be as full on as that. A, the heat is great. The heat is just a really warm and feeling within your your mouth, and it kind of starts to slowly go down. The actual finish on this is is big. Yeah, and it. It's not, you know, I thought it was going to dry out my mouth a lot more. Maybe it's because I took a bigger, even bigger mouth. Maybe I thought it was going to really dry out. It doesn't doesn't dry out as quickly as I thought it might. Fun, you know, I'm expecting that port pipe maybe to 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 to, to dry out quicker. It doesn't it last a bit of time. I really like that. It's quite a sensible uh, port uh, casking, and and for those. Who aren't drinking this and they're just you know tuning in? Prime example of you know full maturation and port really not letting the spirit down, you know really bulking out that spirit. Um, yeah, I really like that. I'm I'm just trying. 
I'm just concerned how many bottles there was. 804 bottles. Um, I'm sure you know this is still available. I think this is some, something that still could be purchased, you know. Um, there was that many of the single casks that were coming out um, of this distillery uh, in recent times, you know. Um, but yeah, for those that for those that don't know um, where we are, Glen Allaghy, um, based Aberlour, um, lovely part of Scotland. You know, always talked about, always wrote about, you know, always uh, in people's minds. It's one of those places, uh, the gateway to the Highlands, I say, you know, um, and, 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 and that kind of um, that, that kind of valley um, that's in space side. So, yeah, that's lovely. It's just lovely. Like, I'm really, really impressed with that. Um, I, hope I, I hope other people got what I was getting there, which is a full on, um, full on flavour, full on fruit. Mmm. Don't want to put that one down. Although I, I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking that Hazelborn is, is is the no, the nose is difficult to, to beat on the on the Hazelborn just now, um, and because we went for that forty six percent at the start, this is a lot of alcohol. We're rushing into a lot of alcohol. It's funny that Sean talks about peat. We're actually, I think, we're going to have to move around. So we've got the we've got the Highlands out the road. We've been down to the Camel Town, the wee the wee nook, the wee uh, crag, the wee offshoot um and then we've we, we've we've taken a wee trip back up into space side but we're going to move on i think we have let me have a look here so yeah so bottle number four okay um and this is where you would after this one we're going to cleanse our palate okay but we've got this one here um is an isla uh, whiskey okay so we've got an 11 year old so Money statement, 10 year old, 11 year old, another, another 11 year old comes in at 57%. So 57% on the bottom, okay. Um, distilled in 2008 using only refilled ex bourbon hogshead. Okay. This one uh, comes from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All right, there we go. So the Isla region, yep. Yeah. And there's the wee number up there if you need to, if you need to go and find it yourself. Okay, fifty three point three one eight. Um, so each one of them obviously uh, is um, is numbered. So this is a uh, Kailila um, Distillery. Okay, so people can go and find that. Uh, I like what it's called here: Entropy Meridian, uh, a lighter side of the Isla Classic, subtle, philosophical, intellectual, evasive, and yet totally enthralling, while away the ennui. Of life, um, they always write some mad bollocks on the the, the bottles here, um, you know, don't they? But it's, it's just where where do they come up with this? I'd love to be the person that comes up with it. By the way, I'd love to say, you know, Paul, would you just write me something for the front of our bottles? Because I would write some amount for them. Do you know what I mean? I don't even need to bleep myself out. I'd write some amount of shite on the front of it for the crack. Um, but you know, it, some of it's poetry, and I think that. You know, harking back to, to Robbie Burns, there's poetry on each one of these balls. You know what I mean? Specifically the, the, the kind of more modern uh, outruns. Um, but yeah, we're going to need a wee bit of, we're going to need a wee bit of palate cleansing after this. You know, I'll probably take in some chocolate. Um, but yeah, Isla Whiskey, Kayla Isla. That's a lovely wee nose. Yeah, I like that. A wee wisp, a wee wisp of of, 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 a, of a fireplace there. Just a wee wisp. It's got that kind of medicinal note that we that, that we can expect. I like that. It's very floral. You know, it's got a lovely floral kind of aspect coming on here. But lots of alcohol. Remember, fifty-seven percent. Um, Eleven years old, young. You know, um, but you know, standard Kayla, like eight year old, isn't it? Um, 10 year old, 12 year old, they've got 11 years old. Oh, that's nice. A little bit ashy. Mm, lingers a little bit there. Very sweet. 
So very, very sweet, ashy. Just that there's that lovely kind of wisp that you need. It's not overpowering at all. It's very, very um, delicate. Does it come across as an 11 year old? That's going to be an interesting question for me, I think. It's kind of got that kind of greeny kind of grass. A wee grassy note there. Definitely like, 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 you know, like a citrusy note, like lemon, um, but florally. I really like that wee whiff of smoke. I'm thinking it's just, it's just enough. The sweetness is, is quite, is, is, is quite welcome, I think, with that, you know, peatedness. Smokiness is, 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 is lovely. You know, I like, look, I like the fact that, I'm, I can, I'm keep drinking this one, this is one of those, I, I, I always get my head with a Kale like I, I'm a fan of them, and I know that some people don't just get it as a distillery. I just really like it. Um, and it is a classic. It is an Isla classic. You know, don't don't be frightened to pick up a Kale Isla and, you know, go for it, have a dram. But this is really good. It's a nice example. I'm liking the fact that, you know, we're, we're able to just go in straight on, ex bourbon hogshead, no messing about, 11 years, see what, you know, see what the spirit looks like. Um, Brendan Carty, don't be so silly. Um, you're missing this because you didn't pay for a box. Don't think it's anything to do with your school night. Um, sure, sure. Did I say that out loud? Has that even gone live? Probably did go live. I didn't mute myself. Um, look, it's good to see you coming on in here and having a wee, a wee, a wee juke. Um, you know, and listen, Kayla is, uh, you know, is lovely. Uh, I'm trying to think, where are we next? Let me just let me look here. Yeah, okay. So, as I say, we're trying to go around the, the regions, uh, but we're also doing it in a kind of mad fashion um, in terms of, in terms of you know, numbers. We're just going with the age statements or the, the, the age of the, the, <laughs> the whiskey. I'm not a Trump. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said Trump and not Trump. Um, you know, I've, I've been called worse is what I could have said there. Like, you know, um, <laughs> cheer, Brendan. Yeah, I'm liking, I'm liking what we've tasted so far. I don't think I've been let down yet, and I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes, you know, although I've had the one five five, I haven't from the Wolf Run, I haven't had the rest, not in these guises. So I've had obviously Hazel Burn before, I've had Kayla before, I've had the Canalaki before, but not in these guises. So this is nice to, this is nice to see. So far, they're not disappointing. I'm going to bring in, um, only because he's, I know he's sitting there with his headphones. Do you want to come in now? You're more than welcome for a chat. Yeah, you want to come in? I can't speak. I, you know, we're going to bring him now. So he's sitting here for the for the banter. I know there's some other people that we can bring in, but we'll bring him now. Let's have you come in. There you Why go, not? now. Not too bad. Good. You have a lovely wee collection of uh, model toys in the background, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's the yeah, Lego. That's, yeah, that's, that's some, some retro collecting going on there. <laughs> yeah. What do you... What, what, oh, brilliant. What, what do we, here, do, you, do you ever remember Skeletric Cars? Were you ever a fan of Skeletric Cars, no? Uh, not really. Kind of passed me by. No, I remember having, I always, like when I was younger, I loved these Skeletric Cars and I always like went to these wee model shops and always went for like the coolest, rarest like little Skeletric Cars. And then I remember getting to my like late teens and smashing them all up, you know? <laughs> just, you do? Just, just smashing them up, just going, ah, this is useless. Who needs a trigger thing? Not me. I've got a computer game here right now. Not me. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with my Sega. I'm sitting here now, you know, playing FIFA 97. It's perfectly fine. Who needs Skeletric? Um, and then, you know, revisiting Skeletric maybe 10 years later and realizing that it's worth a fortune on oh, everyone and their dogs uh, collected the Knight Rider card that I had, you know, that I smashed up. And um, uh -huh. yeah, and the Dukes of Hazard cars and the. Uh, yeah, just such a complete thing in the hole. Like, kind of, um, I remember, my, I remember someone. I don't know who it was. Someone in my family had purchased um, an extension kit of my Skeletrix kit, right? So the, you know, and, and you know, got it was a, as a present. It was a wee add-on thing, you know. And I could add it onto my my main my, my main um, set, and it came with a, a really different power pack. 
Like, you know, the power pack that you got for Scratch was like kind of wee boxy thing. This thing came when it was like a big cylinder thing. It was about that size. It was double the size. It was big, um, you know, <laughs> poor kit. Big, massive um, power pack. And I remember being able to use that power pack for my entire track, which at this point managed to race around my entire house. You know, <laughs> I was like, it was a super power pack. And you can have like four cars, so two cars on each track at the same time. Um, it was that powerful. I remember the, oh, I'm just talking shite now, but it was just one of those things like, just looking at the stuff behind you going, uh-huh. I can remember those things. Remember the, you know, and we kit, we kit got smashed up. Um, now, what do you make of the first four? What, what's your thoughts? Are we enjoying the, the tasting set tonight? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, awesome, good stuff there. Hazelburn. Yeah, yeah Hazelburn's great. What is that nose all about? It's uh, getting a bit of rhubarb in there. A bit of rhubarb. That's yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay. But I'm I'm enjoying this as well now. The, the, it's uh, yeah, excellent. The, it's really. Do you know what? Is it not just this really delicate? I love it. Is, it's yeah, delicate, yeah. isn't it? And it's just the the amount of alcohol is just right. I mean, it just sits in your mouth perfectly, and and, and really, you know. But that wee whiff, that wee of the of the smokiness. Just engulfs the mouth, and 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 that you know, and fades away without it leaving that bitter ashy taste. It's got a lovely ashy note at the very end, which is lovely. It just you know, it it tails off at the right time. And you know, sometimes you're left with a an eyelid that just clogs up the back of your mouth and becomes really dry, and 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 you have to go and drink mm-hmm. again to get that wetness back in there. It didn't it's, feel uh, really it, it is so sweet as well, very sweet, which I think goes very well with the. The peat, yeah, and a lot, look, a lot of people might not like that sweetness on 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 uh, on Isla whiskies, and they might not enjoy that. I, I just felt, you know, with this kind of effort, let's try and look at different varieties, and we will come back to there's a, there's another Isla later on. As I say, we're doing the six regions, but but we'll come back to another Isla which isn't peated. So we're going to a non peated, um, you know, Isla later. Um, but look, let's crack open the other one when you're here now, and we can we can do it together. So, so we're going back to space side, um, back to space side, and we're going for a sixteen year old. Okay, so we've moved up. We've gone from eleven year old up to sixteen year old. Fifty nine point eight percent. Again, lots more alcohol. And this time, second fill bourbon barrel to start with. Second fill bourbon barrel to start with, and then we go into an XPX but. All right. Sounds a little bit familiar now. Sounds a little bit familiar. You know, we did a Highland Park the other day. Now, you might you might not have been in on that taste. We did a Highland Park 15-year-old. Similar kind of production run there. It was in the bourbon cask, ended up in the PX cask. You know, and for me, it's probably one of the most outstanding uh, Highland Parks I've ever tasted. Do you know what I mean? So this time, we're looking at a space side. So a long morn, um... 16 year old Longmorn, you can't go wrong there. Do you know what I mean? Can you? Um, and there we go. It's called the Twinning, it was part of the global gathering, uh, for um, you know, for 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 the uh, for, for the Longmorn, yeah. So, yeah, here we go. Um, I'm gonna pour it in here. Look, there, I'm just reading some of this crap. Um, yeah. Michael Matthews says he was an actual fan and just made this is putting you out there. Uh, it was a fan of the Sweet Afton. Start of the decline, he says. Start of the decline. I'm not sure if it, is that the, the decline of the cigarettes or your decline, Michael? I'm just, I'm hoping it's the start of the decline of the cigarettes at that point. Um, yeah. So, long morn, 16 year old, first, uh, uh, first of all, it's in the, bar, you know, the, the, the second full bourbon barrel. And then first fill EXP, uh, EX, uh, XPX butt uh, to finish. The nose is lovely, isn't it? Really spicy wee nose going on there. Um, yep, spicy wee nose. So a little bit of vanilla on the nose and a little bit of vanilla coming through in the taste, but actually a little bit like brown sugar and spice on, on the on, on, on the initial taste on the tongue. No, I like that. Like chickily. And then it becomes really spicy. So then the second one, there's a lot more spice encroaching across the whole of the tongue. 
oh, smoky, like barbecue smoky. Like, not like smoky smoky, but barbecue sticky smoky. Like, that kind of... Yeah. Yeah, right off the meat smokiness. That's really nice. Um, well, no, I like that. Yeah. I was smelling a lot of a lot of the wood, not not tasting the wood so much. On the you're smelling the PX, aren't you? You're smelling the PX mm-hmm. cask. You're smelling that cask, and you're getting that spicy note coming through there. Very very hint, like you know you're going to go and find it, but you can smell that little bit of vanilla. You know it's not uh, it's, it's been certainly it's been masked by the the PX, but that oh my, yeah sticky. Barbecuey, like taste coming on there. Really like, really like that. Mm. What does it say? A spicy, fruity aroma was followed by candied lemon peel and roasted walnuts. Two second filled bourbon barrels combined into a first PX. But okay, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. There's really a, there is something strong about this it's a strength about this one really kind of catches you in here just just in the mm-hmm. breastbone doesn't it compared to the other ones this is hitting the breastbone yep. it's gone down further than the other ones, the other ones I, was, I was gonna say with just the last one there i wouldn't have picked it out as as strong as it is but this one you you know it's yeah it's got the alcohol in it it's got the alcohol it's got the it's longevity it's got like a long lingering you know Man, man, maneuvering going down that body um yeah unlike the other ones definitely like the first four didn't you know didn't get that far down here here yes nice upper chest kind of warmth in the first two particularly but then this one oh it's going down it's going down and, I, and i've taken less of this one in my mouth you know less than this one, and i've not gone back to it as much uh, as the other ones and still i can taste that like i'm still tasting that right now I'm still getting it, you know, it's still in there. And it's really it's a lovely wee there's a lovely wee fruit which is something really wants me to say like it's uh I wanna say pineapple, right? And that's really strange because it has that kind of really strange kind of pokey sweet kind of note which goes with that pepper. You know that kind of peppery note, but um, whether or not it's like barbecued pineapple on top of the gammon on top of the rib, and it's just the sauce is just pouring all over it. Is that what it is? Because it's it is it is lovely. I like that. Oh, Michael says he gave up the cigarettes and moved on to whiskey. Yes, you're quite right. The downfall, uh, the decline started at that point, indeed. Uh, but you know what? I, I, the, the the I believe the liver you can have a liver transplant. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I doubt very much you can have a lung transplant in the moment. I don't think that's one of the one one of those organs that we haven't managed to to really get you know to to, to grips with. Um. So yeah. So I don't know. Maybe you made a better choice. Like, um. I certainly I've never smoked. I've always been I've always been a uh, an alcoholic. I mean a drinker. I mean I'm someone who appreciates alcohol more than cigarettes. Um. But yeah. yeah. Um, you like that now? Is that good? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. Definitely full on. Like you can tell Robert he's missing out. You can tell Robert you're missing some crackers here tonight. You can make him cry. Um, <laughs> and you know, and that's okay. Like it's okay. I'm not going to wind them up very much. Um, tell him how good it is. Um, <laughs> so like, listen, we can come back on later on now. Yeah, we'll get you back well. on for for a bit of, for a bit of banter. Sure, why not? Um, I'll take you off just now, okay? Cheers. No bar. Yeah. Okay, so we've had five. We've had five. I think there's there's no harm for maybe a wee poem here just now, because I know we've got a couple. We'll do a, a wee poem here just now. We'll move on to another two whiskies, and then we'll maybe have a, 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 another poem. Maybe go for the three, you know, the, the three poems in total. We may have, like... Um, I know if you know Dave. Dave doesn't mind. Then then maybe we go for something. I don't know. Really light hearted right now, or a wee bit like you know. I know he's into love and stuff. I don't know if you've got a loved one. I'm into love. You know, sharing the love. I know Ravi was as well. So we'll bring Dave back on here. Are you okay to come back on? Oh, he's good. He's he's flying. He's, he's loving it. Uh, 
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're talking, absolutely. You're talking about smoking there. You're yes. talking about smoking there. I was, would say I was a professional smoker. <laughs> but of a pal, of a pal who, my personal physician, I went to school with this guy and we called him Barney because when we, we all played in the pipe band at school and when we went on a pipe band trip to the Glasgow Highland Club Invitational, when we were still at school, I had a bottle of martini and his eyes made him look like Barney Rubble and he's been Barney ever since. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy is the top neurosurgeon in, in the East Midlands down in England. And he was my personal physician and we both smoked like chimneys. And he always said to me, and I don't know how true this is, but see if you give up smoking by the time you're 40, then by the time you're 50, all the badness is out of your system. So I tried that. So hopefully it'll work. If not, wow. I'll back 40 a day in the morning if I get lung cancer. But that's another story. Well, no, that's, now, I, think, I think, you know, they, they do, you know, they, you, know you, you just can't get replacement ones, I don't think. But, you know, you, your body can start to heal. You know, your body's a big machine. You know, it, it, I always used to see, remember that, that uh, photograph doing the rounds back in the, Back in the day with a wee mouse going around with an ear in its back, you know. Yes. I used to think there was one with a heart or a set of lungs on for me at one of the time, but that's a, another uh, story. Well, I was going to say, oh. um, a, a poem, yeah, but not. don't give me timorous beastie just now. I would like that later if you could. I'll, I'll go and hunt for that as we speak, but Good we'll mind. get it for you. No, I've got one. I'll tell you what I'll do. I've got one or two that I can do just now, and I'll leave it up to you which one we want. Super. I can either do... As you know, Paul, I see I'm getting out of the way there. As you know, I work normally in the Seamus Heaney home place. And Seamus Heaney, obviously, the, the man who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1995, he got invited to go to a burn supper in the Balmoral Hotel in Edinburgh just after he got his big gong from, from, the, from the Swedes. And he wrote this poem to talk about it and he tried to make it very light and very funny we can do that one or i can do one called john barleycorn which is all no, about listen, I want to give me a bit of shame here. let's have a bit of you know a bit of appreciation you know there's no well I, I, you know shamus here is a, a a great guy he lived most of his life down in in the republic and um, but obviously comes from balaki in west or uh, mid ulster where i come and live just now and he wrote this poem, it's called Burrow for Burns. And he wrote it for this uh, burn supper at the Balmoral Hotel when, uh, when he was invited over there. And it goes like this. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to read this one as well. But it goes, Burrow for Burns. From the start, Burns burrow in rhythm, that tongue the Ulster Scots brought with them. And stick and stall in County Antrim was in my ear from the east of the barn at Western in on Derry Air. My neighbours tubbed and bummed and blowed, they happened themselves until it thawed. By slats and styles they thawed and thawed and snedded thistles. And when the rigs braked and hoed, they wet their whistles. Old men and women getting crabbit, they'd heart like dogs who'd seen the rabbit. Then straight and stare and have a stab at stabbing habby. Custom never staled their habit of quoting Rabbi. Leg lifting, heart some, light some burns. He overflowed the well wrought turns like buttermilk from slurping churns, rich and unruly. Or dancers flying, doing turns at some wild hooly. For Rabbi's free and Rabbi's big, his stanza may be tight and trig, but once he set the sailing rig, away he goes. Like Tam O'Shanter drove the brig, for no one follows. And through his first tongue's going gone, the words list now and added dawn, even the words like strong and thrown have had to be glossed. In Burnsy's rhyme, they travel on and won't be lost. Thank you very much. Cheers. So that was my. But we'll leave yeah, it there. And we'll... The only other thing I would say is the same. You might not know this. I'll leave this to you before we do Sleek It Cood and Timorous Beastie. Is, uh, you know, the, one of his big songs was called My Love She's But a Lassie Yet. And mm -hmm. everyone thinks it's about the girls that he was courting. But it was actually about whiskey when he was an excise man. And his, if you can stand a year or twelve, you'll not be half as saucy yet. And that's what he was talking about. I'll let you go and have your chocolate.
I just want you to. I just. I was thinking. I was thinking there, like you know, the the, the Seamus the Seamus Heaney, like that's such a that that's such a compliment, isn't it? From mm-hmm. one poet to write about another poet, to 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 really actually and and nearly in the the style of Rabbi Bonds. Well, he was trying to copy the Tam O'Shanter stanza. Not that I'm a yes. big poet yourself, but he was trying to change right in that way. Until I went there, to be brutally honest, I used to think every poem should sound like there was a man from Glentucket, and we'll let you fill in the rest. But <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's different to that. There's different things. There's an education. But the biggest thing, Paul, and I'm going to get slightly political, slightly political, the, the best thing that ever happened was that there's this guy called Rob Butler in 1947, here, 1944, in the rest of the UK. He brought in what at that time was called the qualification exam that made everyone have the ability to go and get a grammar school education, which opened up everything, in my mind, to, to the world. You know, education yeah. allows everyone to, to become an equal, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Yes. And without Rob Butler, and uh, it was actually that, like, Government, government of the time, that uh, that would have been lost. Now, everyone goes on about. And I speak to teachers all the time, and some of them don't really like the grammar school system. But I think if you've got uh, a chance to to get there, and and and, and the more intelligent people get there, then the better it is for everyone. Here end of my political statement for That's, today. Listen, do you know what your your, your political statement is shared by hell? A lot of people who talk about grammar schools and how important they are. Um, you know what and what have they done in terms of bringing uh, grammar schools? Let, let's put this in the context. What grammar schools did was it actually brought people who would have been deemed as being really low class, working class. You know, at the very bottom of of of, of even having that ability to go into education uh, and and achieve and bring them out of that. You know. And there's a lot of people, Dave, a lot of people have benefited from grammar education. And Absolutely. Very much so. Very much so. And, you know, people will argue just now whether or not it's the right thing or whether or not it's the right thing to do. Um, I know that grammar education was scrapped by the time I'd, um, in Scotland, it was scrapped mm-hmm. really by the time I'd, you know, got to, to school. I mean, I'm a young guy, you know what I mean? It's uh, one of those perks. I mean, I didn't miss out on that Maggie Thatcher steal my milk on me, like, but, um, you know, <laughs> Uh, it runs too hard for you. It runs too hard. It, it is. It's one of these things. But the the, the problem, I mean, the reason why I like the the grammar school system here is it's it's open for everyone. If you go back to where where we're from, then your parents either pay for a private education yeah. or spend a fortune getting you into the catchment. Therefore, you need to buy a house that's worth half a million pounds just to, to yeah. make, especially in Edinburgh, you know. I was speaking to a friend yesterday and there's houses in Ratho on the outskirts of Edinburgh that are going for upwards of 600 grand. That's the starting price. At Ratho, the village in the middle of fucking nowhere. In Ratho, in Ratho. I mean, there's nothing there's climbing, there. There's a, there's a climbing frame and a, and a, tra- and a train station in Ratho, that's it. Uh, and the bridge in, but that's about it, you know. And uh, you know, and, and but there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Six hundred grand. Thank you very much. Jesus. And, and do you know what? I'll just, no, just be a wimpy home. I'll just say that. <laughs> Either that or Miller's, one of the two. Or you Miller, never know. Listen, we'll get you back in in a couple of whiskeys' time. Good right? stuff. Good so, stuff. Thank you. Ah, here, this is what it's about. You know, here, if we're not having banter, we're, we're, we're losing the plot. So, Highland. Campbelltown, Speyside, Isla. Back to Speyside. So that's our, you know, we had a duplicate there. Um, whoopie do. who cares? Um, and now we're going to go to Lowland. All right, so bottle number six. So your bottle number six is um, a 19 year old. So we've gone 16 year old, we're up to 19 year old now. Uh, so 19 year old coming in at 52.4%. That's 52.4%. Um, and an interesting barrel maneuver here. So distilled in 1999, again bottled in 2018. Lots of these bottled off in 2018, which is, you know, just a couple of years ago when I was really getting into my craze of buying lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of whiskey. Um, I mean, I don't buy any whiskey anymore, surely. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. And um, look, 
cask arrangement here is interesting. We've got first time we were using a bourbon hogshead, and then we're using um, a wine hogshead. So, um, only 258 bottles from Ockentoshin Distillery. Again, this idea of maybe like triple distilled. Um, there's a bit of a theme going on here. And also it sounds so Scottish, doesn't it? Ockentoshin. Ockentoshin. But there you go. From the Cane Head range. Um, 19 years old. 52.4%. Ockentoshin. Uh, as I say, Bourbon Hogshead, and then goes into uh, some wine casks. Um, now let's think about this. Ockentoshin for me is a it is for me hundred percent is a hundred percent hit or miss. Now, uh, you know, and I and I have no issues putting Ockentoshin on the table ever to try to make you know. So I'm going to say this. I found it hard to get into the core range of Ockentoshin. I found it very difficult to to find my way through those, you know, even the, you know, even going up to this 21-year-old. I, I found it difficult to really fall in love with it. But what I would say is every independent bottling I've had uh, of Ockentoshin, and in particular um, Ockentoshin that has cast strength whiskey in it, really, really stands out to me and really, you know, the the, the 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 triple distilled stuff really works well at cast strength um and a lot of that is you know maybe to do with some of the caskings that it's been in but look i would like to think that ockentoshin the 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 base spirit is just superb it's you know we're talking about rabbi burns uh, and his influence in the world uh ockentoshin is a scottish distillery with the influence of ireland you know it's it's influenced by you know uh you know by an irishman um and yes, now, yeah, the three, the three would look. The three would. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying it. For me, sometimes it's just difficult. Um, but I have no problems ever putting Ockentoshin on the table. Like I have no problems with it. And I think it's a good one for for Irish whiskey drinkers. Um, you know, it's it's nice to see some triple distilled whiskey here because that's what we're used to here. We're used to triple distilled malts. We're used to maybe triple distilled, you know, pot stills, but. The, the it's nice to see that. Um, I don't think the hazel burn loses any of its Scottishness by being um, by being you know um, triple distilled. Uh, the three wood is like the bush sixteen says Zoltan. Um, yeah, interesting. That's an interesting. Um, I would like to do the side by side now. Now you even said that. I would have to poke that out. Do a wee side by side tasting. Uh, good to see you. You have joined us, Zoltan. Listen, thanks very much. Um, Sancha to you. Um, yeah, so look, what do we get in the nose? I mean, I'm getting a bit, I'm just going to be very honest here, I'm getting like a, like a kind of briny kind of note that I'm getting. Um, yep, yeah, I'm not getting as much of the kind of vanilla note I was going to expect there from that bourbon barrel uh, that we're using. But I'm getting like a... Yeah, briny, but it's more really, you know, is it coming directly from that, from a wine cask? That kind of nose that, we, you know, when you would have wine, you'd be like, you know, sometimes, I, I don't know, I'm not a massive drinker of wine, although I do know what wine I like to drink, and when I'm drinking it, I know what I'm eating with it as well, and I'm not, I'm not one of those guys who just drinks wine for the crack. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who just sip on wine daily, and good on them, Um but I'm one of those ones that would have wine with my food. Um, and I'm thinking, I think it's hard. And the reason why I picked, and the reason why I picked this one, and I hope like, people can see that every one of these bottles, even though I've maybe not had them before, I've not, you know, I've not, apart from that 155, so far I've not had any of these before tonight, before we've, you know, we've drunk them. So I've not even tasted this one yet, I'm smelling it. But, um, I picked this one because of the because of the, the, the French cask influence. So this wine cask, the French wine cask, um, Chateau uh, Lafitte, yeah, which I believe is an expensive wine, um, especially wine casks that are being used here. Um, someone can correct me. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe they are. But What's the what's the what, what's the need to have wine cask influence in when we're talking about Rabbi Burns? Well, sure, Rabbi Burns is around when we've got you know 
big movement within France, you know, um, Viva la Revolution and, you know, destroying, you know, the, 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 uh, <laughs> giving, say destroying, but it's not, it's, it's providing people with the opportunity to have representation, to be taken seriously, to have, do you know what I mean, all of those things in France, not mean that they were screaming out for it. And then the whole of Europe is screaming out for it. We're screaming out that serfdom be, you know, eradicated, that, um, you know, the monarchy be held to account, that, you know, that it, 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 democracy starts to, you know, um, take shape. So there's a direct reference from here because actually I think, you know, Rabbi goes on a lot about, you know, the power of the man, the the providing man with with, with uh, the ability to control oneself um, and have you know free free freedom of thought. Um, so you know, Rami Burns encapsulates the freedom movement, the re the rebellion, the the kind of you know, all of that 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 goes on and that we see throughout Europe. You know, it's the Enlightenment period. It's got like you know, it's it's got that. Um, you know, aspect to it. And that, that's the only reason I've got this 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 one here. You know, I could have picked any Ockintoshan. You know, they've got some, you know, as I say, they've got some really nice uh, independent bottles out there. We could have gone for some of them core range. Um, but I thought, you know, Lowland, I'm always going to go to Ockintoshan at the moment. Um, although we have some really nice uh, distilleries cropping up. Uh, the Bladnock, which is a a distillery which is you know booming uh, just now uh, again lowland distillery and we've got some new ones operating outside of glasgow as well but look arkintoshan is between for those that don't know it, you come out of glasgow you head north as if you're heading towards um as i say campbelltown and we hit arkintoshan uh, in the lowlands um yeah so on the nose really not getting the the bourbon so this is now you know the wood is now you know encompassed this French wine cask has encompassed that bourbon. I don't get any of it. And it's a little bit, as I say, is it briny? Is it salty on the nose? It's, it's definitely kind of got like a layer of kind of, if it is, you know, a fudge, you know, it's not, yeah, is it a fudge? I don't know. Hmm. And that's a hard one because it's not, again, it's not what I'm expecting from the Ockintoshan. I'm expecting the Ockintoshan to be, I suppose, slightly um, less offensive. And, it, and I, what I mean by it is I want it to be smooth, triple distilled Ockintoshan, you know, um, your Scottish equivalent of, of the best Irish whiskey that you, you can give. And it's not. It's actually quite robust and 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 full on flavour, full on, um, strong, and really rough actually, and 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 and, and more actually um, reflective of maybe a, a double distilled Scotch uh, with that kind of edge that it has to it, a rough edge that it has. Um, but in there we've got that fudge kind of element maybe comes back in a little bit. Um, the fruity element is, is it, tro it's tropical, but it's that kind of not nearly ripe tropical note that we've got. Um, yeah, um, it's not, it's got a creaminess now to it, which is interesting. Not, not like a kind of. In fact, you know, it's got a thick creaminess. The, the, the creaminess is definitely coming right through there, and and I'm definitely getting like a saltiness, like a really salty fudge. Maybe note on it now. Um, dries out, and it dries in. It dries in these cheeks. Um, you know, right up into the gum line. Not a lot of, even though it's alcohol at 52.4, doesn't feel alcoholic at the end. There's a lot of alcohol, I think, midway. Not an initial taste on the tongue, but midway. 
Yeah, it's it's actually really nice the way the alcohol just doesn't offend your 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 front of your tongue, but it kind of sits on your tongue. Lots of sugar and sweetness, like really thick brown sugar, you know, condensed and you know onto your tongue. But um, but that saltiness, it's like that. And but it, and then there's a sour note. It's a really you know kind of um strange sourness that goes on there. Again, I'm, I'm 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 contemplating the fact that I'm not I don't get that from all contortions ever. This is it's not. It's not your normal, and I hope that people then don't go running out and buying all contortion for the for the crack. But going, you know, good to pick up the core range, good to pick up the the three woods. Um, but this is a different beast. This is this is really kind of clone, um, you know, with with with, with lots of uh, something with lots of flavour. Um, yeah. People talk about wine casks and whether or not it's, you know, it's one of those, is it good for, for whiskey to be in? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I I know that we're really familiar with sherry. We're super familiar with sherry and we're super familiar with um, port now, I think, you know, but all these other wine, you know, influences that are, that are coming through. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Madeira. I've tagged on to this. Marsala and Malaga and all these other, you know, just to see different types of wine finishing is so interesting. Um, and look, we've had some a, a great variety this evening. You know, we've 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 we've, we've touched we've touched lucky there with the PX and the, the port and the uh, and the Sontrines. Uh, we've 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 been very very lucky. So this is a really, yeah, this is this, this is you know this is really nice. <laughs> and and, and, and Kind of say that without being like disappointed or uh, over the moon about it, because uh, as I say, I'm not a massive, not a massive fan of Ockentoshin. I just don't get it all the time, and every time you know, as I say, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not let down. But again, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm surprised by it. This is nice. It's nearly. Is it my favourite Ockentoshin? No, probably not. I have that have a rum uh, casking, uh, which is which just blows you know, just blows every other Ockentoshin I've ever tasted out of the water, and, and indeed with many other um, whiskies. But but this is nice. It has that. I told you, it's like that kind of fruit that's not tropical fruit, which just isn't ripe yet. You know, and and I and I like that. It's got a sour note coming through, and I'm I'm not sure. What it is if it's if it's a minty kind of note? I'm not sure. I, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think so. Hmm. I'm going to revisit it. I think we'll we'll get a chat with some of the guys later on with that one. Um. Because it's not. It's not what I was expecting. You know, and I'm kind of. The more I delve into it, the more I get like that sweetness. It's like a. It's like a. a, a it's hard to explain, but like a big lump of sugar, which is just sitting on your tongue and soaking right through. And there is this really nice ripe, un, sorry, unripened fruit going on here. It's just not, you know, hmm, I will come back to that. We shall come back. So um, one more before we go for a bit of poetry. Uh, we're going to go for, what have we had? We had Lowland. What are we missing? We're missing... Island. We're missing the island. That's what we're going for. We're going to go for an island now. So we're going to go for a nineteen-year-old. Um, got nineteen-year-old Aaron. Yeah, and nineteen-year-old Aaron. This comes in at fifty-four percent, and it is Fino Sherry. Fino Sherry. Wow. Okay. This will be interesting. Is it full Fino Sherry? Looks like it matured in Fino, yeah. Fino sherry. Here we go. So, uh, this is this, and I, I need another glass. I've just realized that I'd used a, a glass for something else. Give me one second till I grab mm -hmm. a, another glass. Mm -hmm. That was me just throwing, throwing the glasses around, but here, I'm sure why not. 
Okay, so. There we go. 19 year old, pheno shy, 54%. This one's coming from the Caden Head range, also. Yep. Iron Distillery. Now, I'll be honest, I like Iron Distillery. And I like, you know, and again, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that I really like their. Their, their 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 whiskey, um, you know, I, I tend to find that they are underrated. You know what I mean? Um, and anyone who's been anyone who's been a member of our club knows that I'm a fan of Arn. You know, we've brought to the table over the last five years plenty of Arn whiskey. You know what I mean? Plenty of it. Uh, single cast stuff, yes. Some of the more kind of elusive kind of bottlings. Um, so they had the the, the, the the punch bowl, the devil's punch bowl range, oh, was sublime. But um, I like to find, I like to source these uh, independent bottoms. Although what I would say is that their core range, their core range is really, you know, is really good. Like their core range is, is, is spot on and great price points that, you know, not, not um, overly expensive. For their core range, so okay. So bottle number seven. So bottle number seven, Island, Aaron whiskey. What's big about Aaron whiskey? Um, and what the connection is? Again, I could have gone to any island, by the way. You know, could have headed up to Orkney, or um, you know, we, 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 we could have got something from um, some of the Orby Islands out there. And yet, I went to Aaron because. Rabbi Burns would have seen this in his eye line at certain times, you know, up and down that coastline. Uh, he'd, have been, he'd have been, you know, he'd have, he'd have witnessed this. Um, I think he's he's probably been on Arn. <laughs> I'm going to assume he's been on Arn. Although, you know, um, I was actually trying to find a <laughs> I was trying to try to find a real direct connection with him and Arn, but um, oh my god, that, that, that nose is nice, but do you know there's something familiar? With the nose of the Ockentoshan. There's a familiarity there on the nose. Funnily enough, this one was bottled two years before. Again, we were at 19 years old. But uh, the nose is similar. Right, okay, so. Oh, very light, isn't it, on the colour? Fino Sherry. Hmm. There's a lot of sherry lovers out there, and they'll be able to tell me that that um, why why we have different names of sherries and what what that means, and it's to do with you know I'm probably going to show myself up here, but it's, it's, it is something to do with the quality of the sherry and how long it's been uh, going through the process of um, you know, the, the, the the sherry um, and the making of the sherry specifically. Um, and you know what? No doubt, it's something to do with the the, the, the lineage of the grapes um, and everything else. Potentially, I don't know. Someone will have to, you know, come on and and uh, and, and correct me. But um, there's something about when I think sherry casks, and then we've got the PX earlier, really spicy, really full on spiciness um, on the on on the tongue. This is not over spicy. It's got a little bit of a spice on it. It's actually quite a nice wee spice. But it's not that. It's not the spiciness of the PX and maybe all the Rossos. There's a bit of heat on it, you know. But it's more condensed, you know. It's a condensed kind of spice that you know you get the kind of one hit of the spice rather than it continuously uh, going around on your your tongue. Um, good to see Gerald popping in here. Excellent. And Zoltan, just reading this comment here that was talking about it. Remember here side by side, but remember. A little different. The Ockentosh is a bit more robust. Okay, so previously a bit more robust, uh, more scotch like, but the rubbery nose reminds me of a bit like an Edradour. Interesting, yeah. Um, s s simple. Connor, yeah, Fino is the driest and palest sherry and quite young. Well, there you go. That's the reason why. And again, I'm, sh I'm assuming that's why we don't have a lot of colour. You know, it's not given those big kind of you know orangey hues that we would get maybe from the other also px caskings potentially um okay super 
and yeah, young. So a young shy was in the fen phenol, right? Okay. Is that is that phenol? Is that phenol? Does that mean young? I mean, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm unfortunately I don't know the, the 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 meaning of that word, but yeah. I like this, although there's some familiarity here with this documentation. And is it like what is that? Hmm. Two seconds. No one needs to. Needs to. Like maybe. I'm just gonna go back here. Sorry for the, the, the silence, but I need to drink that again. I'm running. Okay. Thank you, Carl. So it literally means fine, fine sherry, right? Um, and and Zoltan, you know what? This is nice. I mean, you probably do want this. Um, and it is. Do you know what? It's 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 a step up. Um, in fact, massive step up from its uh, core range. But you're getting a DNA there of that iron, which is a really. I'm going to say this. Simple, Scotch whiskey. Simple, easy to drink. Really. Um, you know, not not like a pure, not like a pure kind of expression because that's not that's maybe the wrong kind of the way to describe iron, but it's like it's a very um, accessible Scotch whiskey, and in fact, for it to continue to be overlooked, I think a lot of people kind of ignore it. You know what I mean? But you know, we, we tend to look at you know the bigger brands, you know, the Highland Parks and the uh, even the you know the the Aberlours and the Glendronics, we, we go all oh, oh, tend to move over there, or oh, we go straight to Isla. You know, we drink ever from Isla and we ignore Aaron, maybe, you know. Um, and yes, Connor is a cane head bottle, and yep, it's this one here. So, if you know, sherry cask, yep. But this is this is a really, do you know what? There's a lovely dryness to the mouth at the end, it's a lovely dryness, it's warm. It it has a it has a range of spiciness, which, as I said, it's concentrated, so it kind of just stays in that one spot. Once it once it reaches that point, it just stays. You know, it stays there, and it and it continues just to linger. Um. Hmm. I can find myself drinking more of it, and and I think that it's one of those ones that actually lends itself to having a really nice kind of. Creme bourree, even like a, it, it, it's like that, you know, in the taste, it's, it, it's a, it, it's, it's a creme bourree all, all, all day long. And I really do, I really do like that. A little bit of lemon potentially in there. Um, yep, that kind of citrusy note that comes through, but it's, yeah, even, It's not big and bold, but it's got substance to it. It's not like, I mean, I, uh, I can smell these other ones sitting here, but I'm thinking, going backwards, this is not, it's, it's very delicate in the nose. It's a lovely, um, you can tell, you know, you can tell where it's been, uh, where it's been, you know, stored. I mean, the, the, these guys take the, so the guys at camp, um, Caden Head, take, you know, take the different, um, barrels from from the different distilleries and into their own uh, warehousing, but um, it's the influence here has that beautiful saltiness coming through, and a real a real lovely sweetness. No, not too, yeah, not too, not not too much, and a tiny little bit dryness towards the end, which is really really nice, and I actually really like the way it, it opens like that. Anyway, 54 point, 50, 54% alcohol, it definitely comes across as having alcohol with it. But again, easy to drink. We could be drinking lots of that. Yeah, very delicate. 
Um, yeah, I just want to say, but it's concentrated, isn't it? It's concentrated like on that one bit of your tongue dial. It just seems to just sit there and doesn't want to move. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring Dave back in here, I think, because we're gonna move on to our um, another couple of duplicates. So we've been round, we've been around Scotland. We've seen all of the regions, um, and we've had since definitely lots of different. Um, cask uh, finishes or cask influences. Um, Dave, I'm going to bring you back in here. Here we go. We good? Hi there, Paul. How are you? I'm good. It was really Dave. quite interesting that you you were talking about going around Scotland because everyone thinks of Robert Burns as he's his master poet, but he himself described himself as a musician. He played the fiddle and he went around Scotland once, once he'd made a little bit of money. Now, I I'm a member of the Society of Antiquities in, in Edinburgh, and it's, it's, a, it's a thing that gets you into basically all the places where you have to wear gloves to have a look at stuff. And I've been looking at some of Robert Burns's kind of memorabilia and, and, and books and stuff. He really was interested more in, in music, but I actually think he was never this pauper. He was always a landed gentry. Who else could afford to buy a farm in Mosgiel for ten thousand pounds in in seventeen eighty six. You know, I mean, it's it's just not out there. Well, That's made, not a boy that's a poor. You know, he made his money. He made money at the time. He, he definitely made money while you know while he was alive, didn't he? Well, he sold his first book uh, poems chiefly in the Scottish dialect. Um, they he only made there was only six hundred ten copies ever made of that. 42 went on public sale. You know, it wasn't uh, making lots. But the point I'm, I was going to try and make is he went this tour of Scotland and he picked up over 600 songs and poems. So that's where you get the old Lang Syne from and Aphon Kiss and all that sort of stuff. He picked them up. He was the main collector of Scottish, um, Scottish songs at that time. He did six volumes for McCreesh in Edinburgh, and that's really what his real love was for. Um, so maybe maybe that's just more interesting interesting for, for some more than others, you know. I, I, I get into it. I, it's the same as another guy. He, he, you know, you were talking earlier on about how he was, he was into the, the... It was a very complex character that had different, different ideas at different times. Obviously, he was a nationalist, and I maybe have his sympathies for that, and will not go much further along these these lines but uh but he also formed his own battalion of the uh, militia in Dumfries and paid for their own uh uniforms to defend the the, the kind of Dumfriesshire against John Paul Jones the father of the American fleet the guy who actually came from Kukubri who basically was a pirate and came to ransack the UK and on, on a trip over from America so he's, he's a complex guy that obviously obviously wanted independence in one hand, thought of egality and fraternity with a man's a man for all that, but still wanted to be part of the of the establishment, being an excise man and, and, and building his own militia. But there you go. What do I know? I know nothing, Paul. Uh, I know no, that. You, you, it's not that you know. You, no. I, he's, he's such, he is such a complex figure, though, isn't he? But, you know, he... I, I I class him as being probably the most iconic, you know. If you say Scotland, and you say someone in the arts, you, you have to, you know, you he, he he'd have to be in the top of the list. He'd have to be in the top of the list of someone who who has somehow managed to influence so so many people. Um, and and he's writing specifically. Although I do, I do, I mean, I agree with you, Dave. I think it's all about music. I think he wants that them sung. I think he wants that stuff. You know, song. You know, to 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 crowds. Um, he he is an influencer at the time, not just now. Absolutely, he's an influencer. <laughs> his his best friends are artists as well. You know, his best friends are artists. You know, what I mean, absolutely. Good... And but I was going to say the best thing that ever he fell out with this guy called Doctor uh, Corey, and and Doctor Corey wrote this piece about him in the in the Dumfriesshire Press, roughly. 10 years after he died, which and he was basically slagging him off to all and sundry because he was due him money in a bet. And that became the 
the the kind of the 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 Bible for everyone to quote Burns on. So this was a man who was poor. This was a man who was a philanderer. You've also got to remember at the time that basically there's no TVs at that time. So basically all you could do was uh, go and visit young ladies around the parish, you know. But that's again another story. No, he's a. I mean, he's a flirt. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a flirt. He, he he doesn't let you know. He, he doesn't shy away from the fact that he, he appreciates women. I don't think he shies away from that. You know, um, but he, he you know what? Am I, am I right in saying that he addresses court? That he addresses, yeah. you know, he addresses court. Am I right? You know, so he, he you know, how, for one of his friends would be James Naismith, painter. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he gets involved in you know going to Edinburgh specifically to to to, to, to royal court. Am I right? Um, uh, you know, it went well. Basically, it was just at the time of the new town being built, and all it was very friendly with a guy called Glen Cairn, Earl of Glen Cairn, and he was his kind of his his sponsor, as it were, when he went round everywhere. He introduced them to the polite society, and he used to go there and and go into the the parlors and the, the drawing rooms of the the landed gentry and perform his works. But then he preferred to be down again in, in the likes of the toll booth or, or wherever it may be, eating the oysters and drinking the claret with the with the common man, you know. But he could speak to everyone. He could speak to everyone. Yeah. He's got However, I want you to do I want you to do a wee uh, toast uh, the wee uh wee Timur Timur is this, got it this, here. Is, this is the whiskey we're gonna be drinking after you, you, you sing it, but this is the reason why, because we have we have a lovely wee uh, Scottish whiskey here. Timorous Beastie, but yeah, look, I want to hear it because it it's, to me it's my favourite. But that's just fantastic, pretty simple. Fantastic. I was actually in his first book as well, so there you go. It's got age and, and levity to it. To our mouths, we sleek it, corn Timorous Beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy Beastie! That needn't start a wacy hasty with bicker and brattle. I would be lathe to run and chasey with murder and prattle. I'm sure he's sorry for man's dominion that's broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes us startle at me, thy poor earthborn companion and fellow mortal. I doubt me whiles thou may thieve that then poor beastie thou mourn live and Damien Icker for the thrave say small request that I am blessed with a lave that never missed. Thy wee hussy, to and ruin, thy silly would win a strewn, the Nathan now a big, a new un, and forge in green, a bleak December winds ensuing, be it snell and keen. Thou say fields laid bare and waste, and weary winters coming fast, the causes here beneath thy blast thou thought to dwell, till crash the cruelest coulter past. Or through thy cell. Thy wee bit heap of leaves and stable, that cost thee money and weary nibble, thou turned out for thy trouble at house or horn, to throw the winter's sleeky dribble, as you and call. But, Missy, thou art no so lane, thy proven foresight may be vain, the best laid schemes of wives and men, gang after glory. And leaves us now in a grief and pain for promised joy. Still thou art blessed compared with me, thy present only toucheth thee, but oh, I'm backward, taste an e on prospects dear, and forward thou a canny see, I guess of fear. Fair mouse. Thank you very much. Fair mouse indeed. Sancho. Mm. <laughs> I'm liking that. Um, no, I, I really like that. That poem just says so many things. It just it takes you on a journey from imagining what he is, what he has noticed, and um, his recollection of the world around him at this point in time. Maybe about the stature between humanity, uh, nature, the the purpose of of, of man, um, and and. Yeah, I, I think I think you know, it speaks volumes of social mobility. Um, the yeah, for me, it's a, a you know it, it t ticks every one of his. You know what ticks one every one of his kind of philosophies in one poem, really. 
Out of all mm-hmm. of the poems, I think that's the one that encapsulates him and his, you know, ethos and his, I suppose, maybe his aspirations, you know, because he, he, I don't ever think he, I don't ever think he fulfilled his aspirations, just like many, just like everyone. I don't think we ever fulfill our aspirations, but I think that, you know, he's, that, that, that to me sums him up, you know, he's got, he's got these mad, at this point in time, and, and you know, in, in his lifestyle, he's got mad ideas. I sorry, I was going to say sorry, Paul. I, as you know, I, I, I now I'm not working there just now because everything's shut. But the the Seamus Heaney home place, we have this theatre, and I meet lots of poets that are doing the the rounds. I meet lots of people trying to pun books, and I've met many different people. And I always go out there and introduce them, and I speak to them, and I get every one of their books, and I read their books, and some of it's good, some of it's bad. For the guys who that. They always talk about these legends that are out there, these geniuses, and they're very few and far between, can I tell you. But what the great people do have, the great people do have, I think, is this photographic memory. So the way in which Burns there is able to describe what he saw when he was a 12-year-old laddie playing in the field, he never wrote that till probably 12, 14 years after the event. Yeah, yeah. Yet, it's like, it's in his mind, it's like a photograph, he has his photographic memory, and he can describe it in a manner that you and I would not, well, myself, would never have the ability to be able to even pull it aside and, 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 and think like that. So, you know, genius is, is, is cast around a lot of people, but I think he was true, truly one of them, and he has the ability, as you so rightly yeah. said, to bring in a whole different meaning to, to what you're trying to do. Yeah, and, 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 totally. And I think that it's at this point, at this point in in, in life, at this point in the world and, and society and everything else, you know, some people will be listening to this and, and think that it's very dangerous. That mm-hmm. the, the type of the type of attitude to have here can be a very dangerous attitude. I know he's questioned at several points about you know his loyalty to you know to you know to the the United Kingdom stroke to the to 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 royalty. He's, he's questioned. And he's questioned then in his own life. Mm-hmm. And he's continuously questioned throughout his life. You know, um, a po- you know, sorry, post uh, post his life, um, and and people try to understand them. And I think a, a lot of people, and this is why you have critics of Burns, don't you? You have critics who will argue the point. I mean, I've watched crit- critics argue about Robbie Burns as two different people, as if mm-hmm. he was, you know, two or three or four different types of people. He's not. He's a complex man who. At, at all times throughout his writing and his song and, and, and the, the music that he's trying to convey this, um, you know, he he is a man of many, many, you know, as I say, aspirations and an and intelligence level, which is beyond, you know, people of his day. Do you know I mean? It's beyond, but, even but, those that are educated, Dave, the, the people uh-huh. who are educated around him, that he's having to, like, you know, play for, as it were, you know, and he's right. show up, you know, Listen, these people are, they might be gentry, but some of them just don't have it up here. Okay. Uh, they're, they're... They, they don't maybe even understand what he's all about, you know, And uh, but it is the art, the arts understand them. There's, you know, there's, as I say, the, the, the friends that he has within the art societies and the, 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 those kind of movements, they understand them. They're so, of them, you're... full of them. But the, the, there's several things you've got to remember, and this is getting kind of technical. He was born in, in, in 1759, which was just, just 14 years after the last rebellion, after the last, you know, the, the Bonnie Prince Charlie's last, last stand. Sedition was still there. People were still going to the, the colonies as slaves. People yeah. were still getting moved over to Australia in, in bondage. So he used to, he, and this is when I think he was part of the landed gentry because he was schooled by his father, his father owned his own land, which even in Scotland today, over here in Northern Ireland, you had the Gladstone Land Reform Act of the 1901-1903. Scotland still does not have a, a right to buy. I, I'm getting maybe exactly when Zoltan, when, when, when Guinness was established, exactly the same age, you know? Um, but... His father paid for his education, and he used to write under pseudonyms in, in, in papers 
and and that's where he was doing most of his kind of nationalist Scottish stuff. But he knew he had to play the game, so that's why he did the other side as well. He was yeah. maybe speaking, maybe it was, it's a trait from from some. I was going to say from over here, where people speak out of the both sides of their mouth at the same time. You know, <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> There's the, a year, you know what? There's interesting people in history. Um, you know, when you look back, particularly in Scottish history, I think there's you know, there's some characters out there that really shape, I suppose, national identity. He has created Scotland's national identity nearly by himself in some respects. As you know, yes, look, do we have this um, nationalist approach? Of course, there's, there's a nationalist approach to some of his writing. It becomes, you know, as a nationalist, you can you can pick on Rabbi Barnes all day long, and he'll be your best friend. He'll be your companion in the fight for nationalism. Um, some will say that he's, you know, he's slightly unionist in some of his in some of his writing, and actually falls out a little bit, you know, with um, with, with with Scottish uh, gentry, and falls out with um, Scottish nobles, and maybe looks towards a, you know, a, a, a unionism uh, slant, but. I think what we get here is we get one person who is a massive influence on Scottish revivalism at this point. So you know, we mm-hmm. do talk about you know mm-hmm. just prior to this, you know we have you know mass uh, execution and slaughtering of Scots, um, a, a quell of the Scottish culture, um, and indefinitely, and and you know he he's part of a revival. And again, looking at other people in around these kind of you know uh, you know the the same kind of period. Going around painting parts of Scotland, showing off Scotland to you know Scotland is the most beautiful place ever. Fact, and the, the, those pictures are being sent around the world, you know, framed up, sent away. Do you know what I mean, his, 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 you know, his message has been told far and wide uh, across Scotland. Um, it, it reminds me, look, that that the, the, there's no harm to being educated, and I think that's one of the things no. that's really interesting. William Wallace, I always hark back to William Wallace, right? People think I'm mental. Right, but I, I always when you talk to people who are not from Scotland, and you say William Wallace, ah yeah, great Braveheart, that was brilliant. Do you know what I mean love watching it? Made me want to be Scottish for five minutes. Of course it did. It makes you want to be Scottish. It makes you want to go out there and take blood from any Englishman ever said something wrong to you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But that's a film. William Wallace is an interesting example of this. Someone who is educated, and yet you have this different, somehow people have this different kind of vision of him. You know, William Wallace was super educated, went to university, you know, educated by the bishops, uh, you know, and the, 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 the Catholic clergy in, 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 in Aberdeen. You know what I mean? Paid for. You know what I mean? Um, part of, part of you know, he was, William Wallace was the establishment. William Wallace was a, you know, a, a full-on uh, lord of his own land. And, um, and yet he's the he's the rebel. He's the thorn in the side of of people. And yet he is the you know for for, for a lot of people he is just the he's just a local bloke who is like proper muscle and he's going to take the fight to the English. He's a lucky fella. He spoke many languages. I believe he spoke Latin, French. Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, very well educated was able to manipulate people to come on board with him. And when he started going round and 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 getting. The, the you know he he's a problem I suppose you know he's a problem he's got to unite people in Scotland who have their their vested interests one because it's you know Scotland at that point with William Wall starts to become um, prosperous for certain people you know who are not part of the establishment they start to become prosperous but then you've got two issues clan system and um, and gentry and gentry you've got those two who are already kind of ignoring each other. Because there's a political divide across the country at different points, you know, and that religious divide that he had to like conquer, you know, what I mean, people don't get that with William Wallace, and it's the same, you know, they don't get this educated fellow who's able to bring about change, you know, because he's educated, not just because he can hold a sword and slaughter people. He's very good at that, yes, because he's super, super. But he's actually probably one of the most intelligent people that Scotland's ever produced. And again, Rabbi Burns, what he does with the pen. You know, is is remarkable. You know what he's able to, you know, again convey even to this day that it rings true that all of that, that all of that passion, all of that energy, all of that, you know, inspiration and aspiration that then he has rings true today, 
and I, I just want people to I want people to respect them, read it, go and have a, a read at some of his stuff and, and understand it, you know, soak it all up, you know. Um very interesting there's, fellow. There's a there's one other person that's had a great influence on what Scotland really is seen by the rest of the world, and that was uh, Sir Walter Scott. So Walter Scott basically invented the tartan. He invented everything else. You know, it was for King George. I think it was King George IV trip to, to Edinburgh in 18, 1804. 18, oh, it was 1804 or 1824. One of the two. I can never remember. But that's how in Edinburgh you've got Hanover Street and George Street and Frederick yes. Street and all the Hanoverian kings and, and queens. And your, your friend, my Irish speaking is... Connor, yes, it's Connor. Yeah, Connor. Yeah. Connor. Connor's quite correct. There used to be this uh, theatre company in Scotland called, uh, was it 784? 7% 7 of the population own 84% of the land, you know. That, and and, that, that, and it's, it's simply is true. I mean, it's still the truth. I mean, the, the, the big thing, I suppose, is that because the concentration of populace in Scotland mm. live within the, the main four cities, you know, so correct. and it's concentrated. And and you know what one thing Scotland has which is now better than England, and maybe even better than here. I'm not 100 percent sure, but in Scotland, you you know you can buy the land and the piece of land, and you no longer have to lease the land. England though, you still Ooh, have. Are you sold. sure? Yeah, I guess, uh, but you know, Scotland. Are you Scotland sure you can you can you can buy it? But well, they got rid of the see. There was a few was the freehold, few duties. The there was a, aye, but the. The, the few the, there used to be few duties and they, they were mostly owned by the the church the church owned huge spans of the church of scotland yes. owned massive amounts of land that actually got brought out in the 1970s and i know paul that's like the dark ages to you my friend but uh, it's, it's not uh, not that long ago not that long ago uh, and you used to have to pay every year on your mortgage i mean it's a bit before my time to owning a house there in the 70s when i was around there and uh you had to pay a certain amount. It might only have been five pound, five pound a year, something like that, mm. maybe ten pound a year. But if you take all the tenements, and there was maybe 12, 14 houses in every tenement, and they're getting one from everyone in the street. You know, it's a lot of money, a lot of money, yeah. and you you bought yourself out of that. No, you're right. You're I right. Think, I think that is now. I think it's now changed. I mean, you have you you have less. Uh, leasehold and you do now freehold. So freeholds now. I mean, you buy you buy a house now in Scotland and it, and it comes with freehold. You know, you're guaranteed the piece of land that you live mm -hmm. on and the sky above you. But um, I think here, I'm, what I'm noticing is there's, there's a new move and there's a new move because you know that was a lucrative business for landowners to charge the the the, the rent capacity on all of those different p um, pieces of property. So you have that new movement here. And I've seen it here in Northern Ireland, where I, you know, when I, the 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 estate I live in, we have to pay a factoring fee, a factoring fee for an mm -hmm. estate. And I'm like, that's the same thing, you know. You need, you know, just, you know, cut your grass. Your, yeah, your cut my grass. I have no grass for you to cut. Don't be cutting my grass. Um, you know, it's very, it's, it's that's taken us back to people, you know, being, you know, not not having the freedom to do what they want with their own properties. So there's a lot of covenants now. I've noticed in a lot of new builds. You know that, that you you have to look very carefully at those covenants that have been put in, and they are taking us backwards. They are taking us back, yeah. You know to that to that period. But yeah, you still have a mass amount of land because it's land. You know, people the people who own land in Scotland, they are super wealthy people. And actually, what and and just to help Connor out there, the people who used to own land in Scotland. So you know, going back into that kind of period, anything between the. The 1600s and the the, the 1800s, that kind of period, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even just before that, the people who owned, la owned land in Scotland were the same people who owned land in London, and they were the Scots. So the Scots owned the land in London and in Scotland. You know, the 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 were the, the, the they were the landed gentry of Scotland and England. You know, these are the same. They they were one and the same. The er, the, the the Lord Argyle, you know, would own like would own like you know. I don't know, two well, square miles in London, you know. The Duke of Sutherland owns, owns the vast majority of the land. I'll tell you one, yes. one wee thing. I'll tell you one wee thing, and I'm going to and I, and I, I'm gonna apologise now. I'm going to apologise now. So if anyone is really offended, I apologise now. But 25 years ago tonight, I was at a burn supper, and there was Lord Bruce. I was playing the pipes and doing the, and addressing the haggis. 
Uh, Lord Bruce and the Duke of Sutherland, and I'm on the top table of these guys. I've got no idea. These guys uh, could be my grandfather. You know, they're that much older than me. I have no idea how I got there. I'm sitting <laughs> in this place, and I'm doing this stuff. And uh, I turned around. I was getting bored. I was getting bored. And uh, I said to the Duke of Sutherland, you know, I'm, I'm having a whiskey, getting a bit, bit kind of full. And, and, and getting stuff, and I said, sir, you must uh, do a bit of shooting in your estates, obviously. He goes, yes, yes, I do do, do a bit of estates. I said, listen, listen, tell me, tell me, have you ever seen a startled moose? And he goes, no. I said, can I show you? And he goes, what? And I went, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? <laughs> and, he, and he went, Pure mental at me going, that's not funny at all. That's not funny. At all. <laughs> and, and then, and then I, I went away and thinking, oh, that maybe never went down too well. About half an hour later, him and, and Lord Elgin are standing at the bar and he's going to him. So I'm going, practice, practice. Not that I'm a big royalist or a big man for the world. No. So. <laughs> But uh, I thought that was kind of funny. I thought that was kind of funny on the Duke of Argyle. Spot on, dude. Spot on. Listen. I, like I'm going to finish up with an R2. Yeah, with you've got the whiskey to finish, and I've been keeping you too long. No, don't be daft. Listen, I've really appreciated that. Um, if you want to come back on again, you let me know. Put your wee hand up, and we'll get you back on. But listen, I've really appreciated that, Dave. I really have. Crack on! I'm enjoying the last two now. Good man. Sweet decent. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks very much for your help. Bye, Thank now. you, Dave. Thank you very much. Oh, that was super. Um, so yeah, look. Apologies. I was drinking that while we we're. Um, or listen to the wee, the wee poem. But uh, yeah, sorry. So I didn't introduce it properly. So this is the Timorous Beastie. Uh, it's a blend. Now, it's a blend of only single malts. Okay. Um, Highland single malts. Okay. So Highland blend malt. Okay. There you go. Highland blended malts. Um, sherry casks only. Minimum 21 years of each of the, the single malts that are in there blending up. Okay, comes in at 46.8%. Douglas Lang. So Douglas Lang, um, Timorous Beastie range, 21 years old, all sherry cask influence and uh, nothing else there other than sherry casks. Yeah. And and the wee mousy, Timorous, the wee Timorous Beastie. And that's why I love this. I love their range. Douglas Lang have a great range of, um, of of blended whiskies, and they're always blended malts. There's no grain in here, so they're all blended malts. They've got lowland malt. Um, they've got a lowland blend. Sorry, they've got a Isla blend, Big Pete. Um, they've got so the lowland ones, Epicurean. They've then got a Space Side. Um, they've got you know they've got an Island one as well. So um, Scallywag, I think, is Space Side, and then they've got uh, Oyster Rock Oyster. You can get used to be called for the for the, for the islands. And th this is the Highland one. Really, really, really good mix of some really fine Scottish uh, malts in here. Um, and for those that have got it, this is a sherry bond. This is super. I mean, 21 years old. Minimum amount of, you know, malts in here. All 21 years old and above. I think that's great. I mean, I'm liking the fact they've gone from non-age statement right the way through to, at the moment, 21 years old. Um like, yeah, the alcohol content slightly less than what we're we're, we're being used to, um, but at forty six point eight percent, I think it's, I think this is great. The nose is just so robust. Do you know what? Heavenly. Heaven. I'm, I'm I'm not going to shy away from this. This is one of my favourite all time Scotch whiskies, and I don't care that it's a blend. And I think that people need to be not pretentious and get with the blends. You know. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's got it's got it's just got sherry written all over, but it's like it's not just that. It's so big and bold. The heat's just right. Just, you know, and, and it and it's not got a super long finish. The finish is it, you know finishes is slightly i suppose it kind of maybe if that's the, the imbalance of it all it's maybe it should be longer 
maybe it wants to be longer. Um, I think for the amount of alcohol I've been drinking so far, it is, you know, and what I've seen, you know, in terms of, you know, the longer finishing, um, it, it maybe comes up a little bit short, but it really holds its own um, as a blend amongst all of these single malts. Uh, it de definitely does that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what people think as, as maybe their, their favourite of the evening. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring on, uh, I think Louise is there. If Louise wants to come on and she can, you know, does she want to come on? Did she want to put her hand up? I didn't know she wanted to come on. So is that your hand up? Right, okay, that's dead on. We'll bring her on. Um, but yeah, I hope people really enjoyed that one. So that was bottle number eight. Timorous BC, 21 years old. I could drink that all day long. In fact, you know, it's, it's it, it, if I started on that at dinner time, I would be drinking that all night. That the bottle would be gone. It, it's just, I, I'm a big fan of sherry influenced uh, whiskies, and I think that that's that's a standout. Right, I'm going to bring Louise in. Let's have a look. Okay. Hi, Paul. Yes, How's Louise, you? you're there. Yes. Yeah. How have yeah, you been? Yeah, well, how have you been doing? What, what, do you, what do you make of the big you know, the timorous beastie? Do you know what? Timber's Basie is one of those whiskies that we would tend to have quite a lot at Belfast Whiskey Club and it's always one that I do genuinely enjoy but that one I think is one of my absolute favourites. Just as you said, it's really, really robust. Great on the nose. Yeah. Really, really loving that. But it really delivers on flavour as well. I mean, that's one of the things that I would yeah, say I about Timber's Basie. It really delivers I every time. Doesn't it? It doesn't. It doesn't let you down. And we have tasted, yeah. So I mean, within the club, we've gone through the range. Really, I think we've tasted yeah. all of the, the the range so far. Um, we've, we, you know, we've, um, and there's not been a bad one. Yeah. To date, okay. you know, they've all scored pretty damn well within the club. You know, and they're they're well accepted. Um, mm. Yeah, I think. Do, do you think it stands up well against the rest of the the malts tonight, the single malts? Um. Yeah, I would. I mean, I think one of the things I would say about Timorous Beastie, it's one of those whiskies that I can really differentiate from the crowd. Like, whenever you're trying a Timorous Beastie, you do recognise it. It does have that kind of DNA. And based on what I've had tonight, I mean, yeah. Like, I think age statement-wise, it lives up to your expectations of what you would expect it to be, because sometimes with the older whiskies, you have that expectation that you expect it to be a certain thing, and then when you try it, it could be somewhat underwhelming, whereas very much with the term of safety, it, it delivers. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's one of the, you know, maybe younger whiskies in the um, in the range, or whether it's it's what we're having tonight, but every single time it, it delivers, you know, whether it be a youngish whiskey, and you go, do you know what, that's actually really good, versus an older older age statement where you're going yeah that hits the mark of what i would expect it to be like it delivers every time no oh, good i'm like look I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying that uh i think yeah i definitely think it's it's well worth um yeah it's well worth waiting for as well i think it's one yeah. of those, we're, we're kind of going around the, the you know the, the whole of scotland taste and everything and then it's no harm mm -hmm. to come back to the highlands so our first taste of the Highland there was the, the Wolfburn, um, mm. non age statement, you know, single malt, um, influenced with the port cask. But this is pure on, you know, sherry influence. And it, and it's not uber spicy. It's not that uber spicy no, sherry. It's, it's, it's not, definitely not that. Nicely balanced. You know, it is really, really nice, nicely balanced. And I think when you refer back to the Wolfburn, I mean, I was on the Papa Whiskey Club tasting whenever we got to try the, the full range. And I do think there's a lot of potential in Wolfburn. Like, I'm liking what they're doing at the moment. But as you say, they're a relatively young distillery. I think there's a lot more to come from those guys. And I'd be interested to see what the whiskey's like, you know, in the next couple of years. Because I think there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, they definitely have one of the best ambassadors. Am I yeah. right? They have one <laughs> yeah. of the best ambassadors. Out there, he, he's so good. He's such good fun. He, he, Mark Westmoreland is on point. Yeah, he is on point. And do you know what? I hope he. I just hope he's. Um, I hope he. Hope he's ready for 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 this year's festival because he's he's mm. he's he's telling me he's he's hundred percent on board and he's going to be doing some yeah. fun stuff. So uh, we're looking forward to 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 Wolfburn and what they've got coming. Well, that's the thing. Listen, I mean, we'll I keep you on here while we do our last one. So we're going to do our last one.
Yeah, so we're going to the last one. It's bottle number nine. Uh, it's going back to Isla. Um, we're going back to Isla and we're looking at uh, a Brook Larry. So looking at a Brook Larry, we're looking at a 22-year-old uh, Brook Larry um, coming in at, let me just have a look here, 51% alcohol. Um, it's part of the Valinch uh, series. So these are bottles that are done um, the Laddie Valinch are bottles that are done and really only released at the distillery. They shouldn't be released anywhere else. Sometimes, you know, you'll see them secondary sites and elsewhere. But these are done um, at the distillery. Um, so 22 years old. This one is using um, a rum finish. So mm -hmm. I was a massive fan of, uh, of rum finishes. Uh, people know this. So that's why I've left it to the very end. We're going to go for the... The, the, the rum cask. So, bourbon cask to start with, and then enhanced in a Guyan rum cask. For those that know, I've also been to Guyana, so it's kind of has a, for me, it has a bit of a, um, for me, it has a bit of a, a connection. But it's also a connection to Rabbi Burns. So, I think Dave touched on it slightly. You know, at this point in Rabbi, Bur Rabbi Burns' life, we've got people being shipped off, you know, around the freaking world, uh, particularly to, Dave, you want to come in? Oh, Dave, hold on. We'll bring, we'll bring Dave in. Two seconds, Dave. We'll bring in. We can add you to the stream. Sorry, Dave. Go ahead. Oh, I've muted you. There you go. Dave, you have to unmute yourself. There you go. I'll unmute myself now. His brother Gilbert actually was a slave. Uh, I think he owned a slave in Jamaica, which is where he was going if he didn't actually... Um, was successful with his first book, uh, The Commander Condition, poems chiefly in the Scottish wow. dialect. Which is, you know, how I, how you become, you know, complex characters. But I just thought I'd throw that in when you're talking about going to the, the, the rum yeah, no, drinking places. Just right. I mean, look, you know, you can stay there, Dave. I mean, look, Guyana is one of those countries where, you know, was constantly being, you know, invade, invaded by uh, the European powers, you know. Uh, we have, you know, part of that country was split up as French Guyana and then we have British Guyana. And yeah, you you know, you would have had um, people getting sent out to the West Indies, out to Australia, uh, all over the place. And, and slaves, Scottish slaves. Sent Absolutely. Out. Not, not people just emigrating for the for the crack and trying to get better in life. No, no, no. Sent, <laughs> sent as slaves. Um, and it, 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 people talk about black slaves as, a, as, as if like that was the only and has ever only ever been the, the one type of slavery in the world. And yet we forget about Irish slaves, we forget about Scottish slaves. Um, you know, and and, and 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 look, I'm sure there was a vast amount of European slaves at some point as well, but the, the, the sad fact about I suppose the sad fact about Scottish slavery is that even for some slaves from Scotland, they were promised a better life, you know, and mm -hmm. yet the one you know, once they were on those boats, that was the end of it. You know? Well, a, a lot of them got the option either to be killed or be sent and never go back again. You know that was the that was the deal, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh... no, and and you know what? Had I suppose we had some we had some real. You have the Daliada um, failure. Don't we? We had that big, uh, the big uh, failure of, of, of. Well, but but if you if you actually look into, I mean, I'm getting very political now. But King King William, who had a wee dalliance over here, shall we say, was the man who who actually said to the Scottish nobleman, if you actually bail out the the, the Scottish uh, into into what is now is it Puerto Rico or is it um I the Dalinada stuff, if you actually bail them out and put the money back in, then you will lose all your lands, you will lose all your titles, you will lose everything. So that's who stopped that. However, again that's just you've got to read these things with a big well, yeah, to. <laughs> totally Dave. Anyway, um, listen, it's more a whiskey than a history. It's more a history podcast than a than a, than a whiskey podcast you know, this tonight. Is, this, is what, this is what these are, conversations are for, you know. Um, I'm, I'm I'm I don't know about you, Dave. If you're on the last one, if you're drinking it, but it's this is rum influence, you know, whiskey. So big, twenty two years old, fifty. What did I say? Fifty one percent alcohol. Um, Bourbon cast to start with, but that rum influence, and it's petrol on the nose. You know. You were talking about the, the Malt Whiskey Society earlier on. I met my wife in the Malt Whiskey Society in, in Edinburgh. 
Oh, the vaults. Down the vaults. In fact, when I had the, I had a wine business, Paul, and uh, I used to use that because I used to use that as my my office, and it was great. It was a fantastic place. But see, when you're obviously drinking, I I I like rum as well as whiskey, and uh, some of the rums in there I can't remember. To be fair, you know they're quite uh, quite easily done with the with the the sugar syrup. But there you go. What more can you say? Connor's making a good point. Yes, hundred percent. Cromwell deported ten thousand Irish and Scots to the Caribbean. Damn right. There you go. No, but look, it's it's a, it's a depressing it's a depressing part of history. But I just I'm thinking, you know, there's a lot of chat, and I'm all for. Um, I, I'm actually, do you know, I had a had a big argument recently, and I hope people don't take this to 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 uh, to extreme. I had a big argument about the positive role that Britain played in ending slavery. You know, but a lot of people get on about you know brits the, the the worst slavers ever yeah they, they, they were but some of the politicians that, that that then fought to end slavery you know were british politicians they were the, you know that they, they they had uh they had some some good ideas you know and saying that slavery exists exists today it existed then you know slavery still exists and it's absolutely terrible that we're in a position whereby you know slaves are being moved around countries you know uh for the pleasure of others uh to be work you know what one of the biggest i mean I'm not going to name and shame people, but there's a massive, there's a massive slave uh, movement um, from 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 likes of uh, South, you know, South Asia into parts of um, Middle, you know, Middle and Eastern Asia. Do you know what I mean that movement of slave mm-hmm. trade is huge right now, and it is, and it's for everyone to see. It's clear cut what has been done between those governments, you know, and it's governments that are are are, are trading up people. As slaves, you know what I mean. And look, you know, North Korea gets a bad, uh, a bad rep. Fucking right, it should. You know what I mean? Because it's, you know, because of what it, what of what it's doing there just now. You know, supporting um, industries and in, in other countries by you know forcing their their people to, to 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 leave their homes and travel hundreds of thousands of miles to go and uh, to go and work for nothing because the money comes straight back to to to, to their country. Terrible, and people are. Yeah. Literally, I mean, people are getting caught up about the fact we had, you know, slave trading going on years and years and years ago. No, get caught up with the fact that we have it right now. And if you're going to bore yeah. the whole discussing and crying about the fact that we had it, make a fucking damn bit of change to what can go on just now. You know why? Why would people go to a World Cup in the middle of freaking nowhere? When it's been built by slaves, who the who the hell? I mean, I'd be be very political, but I tell you what, I'd be. I'd be wrong not to be. I'd be wrong not to be upset. And I would be doing Rabbi Burns an injustice if I wasn't speaking my mind, I, I think. You know what I mean? So, I think you're right. But, uh, you know, the, it's the traffickers. It's the traffickers as well, the enslaved people. And, uh, yeah. You know, it, it's really it's really horrendous where people, uh, yes. as, your, as, as Connor says, you know, China's just, just playing the game. But yeah. you've got to, you've got to hear as well, and people get uh, sold into the the sex slaves and all the rest. Yes, it's just absolutely horrendous, you know. Yeah. You know, I it sounds as if I've been all around the houses. I used to work in in antisocial behaviour in Edinburgh City Council as well. And, uh, yeah, we've had this discussion. Yes, it's That's brutal. Right. It's absolutely yeah. brutal. But but what you don't see is quite horrendous when you've got people. Being trafficked is, is is quite horrendous, and people you've got to pay back your passport. You've got to pay back your passport, but you never can. You know, heart, heart, absolutely heartbreaking. And look, However, this, Louise is looking really, really interested there. You know, <laughs> there's there's too many people that put blinkers on because it's not something that directly affects them. It's not something that they see on a day to day basis. They just they put the blinkers on and they just they ignore it. They say well i don't it's not something that directly affects me it's not something that i directly see so they just they they don't want to acknowledge it they put their blinkers on but that doesn't mean that it's not happening and it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be something that isn't addressed no it needs to be talking about it needs to be put out there in that mainstream people need to be made aware that this is something that is happening exactly no i was going to say the worst i find about it all is they're actually Basically sold into slavery by their own people, and that's even worse. I find that if you if you can't 
you know, we in 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 Belfast, us Scots in Belfast, try and look after our own when they're over here. We try and help each other. I I cannot for one minute ever think of me trying to enslave one of my fellow countrymen. And if you do, it's uh, a very harsh, very 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 uh, sad state of affairs. Yeah. No, I'm, you're just totally right there, Dave. I'm going to bring Niall. Niall, do you want to come back in for 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 a bit? Are you okay? Now he wants to come. He's not sure. Oh, he's, he is sure. He's going to come in. Okay. Um, sure, no, I think, look, I think, no, sure, why not? But I think, look, we, you know, I think it's interesting because, look, Robbie Burns, and, and this is what his, it's it's about him, it's about, if I, but I tell you something, you know, Robbie wants to have these conversations. He wants to mm -hmm. have them then. He wants to have them now. He wants yeah. to talk about this. He wants to talk, you know what he wants to talk about? He wants to, want, he wants to talk about humans having the right to, to have self-choice, to, to, to self-determination, to you know, to have those things, and yet, you know, we we are living. You know, we, we you know, we just haven't got to that point yet. Yeah, we're still it's, living it's in a world controlled by a few. But it's a travesty that we live in a society today that should provide those opportunities for everyone, and yet that is not the case. And that is a complete travesty that we are faced with that today, because. Given the, the situation that we are in in the UK and further, I mean, there's absolutely no reason why that shouldn't be something that is open to all, but it's not. Mm. True. Yeah, no, very much so. Very much so. And I have no problems in calling out the Chinese and what they're doing there either. You know, so fair yeah. play, Connor, for mentioning that. But look, it's not just that. It's, there's a, I think the, be, I think the best like toast to Robbie Burns is us being able to have that discussion, do you know what I mean? And being able to highlight anything that is that you know to do with the injustices that maybe he even saw back then. Um yeah. Now, did you enjoy your whiskey? What was the what was the last sorry Louise, what was the last one? Okay. No, I was just gonna say, you know, I think you know, Robbie Burns would want us to, to look at things globally. You know, it's not just about what's happening within our local communities and and the UK, but further afield. And having that strength of character to be able to call out what's happening on a global scale you know like we live in a world where we are connected globally where we can see what is going on globally so it's exactly what we should we should be doing like we should be calling out those things no 100 louise now would you like the last one yep yep definitely i can't hear you now but uh, you're not on mute oh, hello yeah. hello all right <laughs> i can hear you <laughs> good. Yeah, excellent. That's uh, been a good lineup. Good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it now. That's important that you've enjoyed it. Um, and again, not, I mean, I don't want you bragging when you're speaking to the likes of Robert. You know, I mean, just, you know, give him a wee hint, you know, gentle wee nudge and stuff. But um, yeah, I just think it's, I, I just think doing this tonight is, is really important. I think, you know, we got lots of whiskey out to lots of people. It was good to try and, you know, get people tasting lots of different, again, it's different casks. I'm, I'm interested about different casks. We're doing this thing with the, the club just now. We're going around the different distilleries in Scotland. So mm. It's not just Irish whiskey. I think this one was good because we got to go around the houses. Um, apart from the 21-year-old Timorous Beastie and that 155, I hadn't tasted the other seven. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Not in their not in their kind of forms. Um, so that was good for me. I'm liking that, just tasting new stuff. Uh, and I've not been let down personally by any of it. You know, I was I was I was pleasantly surprised by it. Um Dave, I'd like to get your opinion. I know that because Niall and Louise are both involved with the club. Um they, they drink whiskey on a on a daily basis now. I think it's like you know, it's a, a daily thing for them to pick up a bottle of whiskey and just crack it open at lunchtime. But Dave, what about yourself? Were you what do you make of the whiskeys? What did you make of that tonight? I I liked your wolf burn right at the beginning, awesome. and I liked yeah. the yeah, and I liked the last one as well. I thought the last one because I have a a rummish kind of background. Those over here, I I was brought up on OVD almost intravenously, and yes. it's an old Vati yes. Demerara, great stuff. Yeah. You know, I used to call it the drink of the future. You know. Because they were making all these disco, disco uh, drinks, you know, with the bottles, and they never touched dark rum. I was always deeply disappointed. So it's called the drink of the future, but it's got that undertones. It's got that nice. I find that there's a little bit of toffee sweetness to the end of the, the, mm -hmm. the, the back. Yeah. 
and uh, totally suits my suits my suits my taste buds, you know. <laughs> Super. Oh, cool. Listen, Dave, I've really look. I've really appreciated you. Come on, it's been great crack. Look, and I, I do mean this, and we, we you know we've said it before. We need, we love to do things in person. You're a great guy to be around. It's good fun, good fun sure. when we've got you. Um, I have, I have I had a tremendous night, Paul. I've, I've hopefully oh. uh, you've had you've enjoyed. Everyone's enjoyed yes. everything as well. Um, the whiskies are fantastic. The box that, that that came out with me today, I was most impressed. And uh, thank you very much for for oh, including nice me in box. this. It is a nice wee box, eh? And you've got your wee glasses. Uh, it's fantastic. Wee... Good, good. Okay. You, you've you've converted me. I mean, the only thing is, a school night is never good for me because, uh, <laughs> bit bit like yourself, one's too many and ten's not enough. You know, <laughs> and uh, you know, there's there's moderation, and I've never I don't understand that terminology, and and, and I think it's a, a trait of many. But uh, I've enjoyed myself. I've, hopefully, everyone else has enjoyed themselves. The star of the show is obviously yourself, Paul. Because you you you're able to describe. I've been taking notes as well of all the different whiskies that we've been having. So Good. so uh, if I ever decide to to go into your business, I'm 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 taking all your notes with me. But uh, <laughs> fantastic knowledge that you have, and um, I feel better educated uh, tonight because of that. And uh, thank you very much for your for your in, for your input and, and your knowledge. Cheers, Dave. Been a great night. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. And listen, genuinely looking forward to listening to you with the bagpipes again. I know we need to. I know we need to. I know we need to get you penciled in for next year. But I think you know, hopefully, hopefully you get a chance to play them again soon. And I know that you know you're you're, you're going to be confined to. I, I was explaining to Paul earlier on that I I gave them to a friend of mine on the eighth of February last year, and then everything to 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 basically fix for me. And then basically, I've not seen him since. So hopefully, he's still got them, and he hasn't pawned them anywhere because they're worth a few pennies. But uh, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he won't have. And uh, but we'll be back in the saddle again very shortly. Yeah. But, uh, and but if we nice get plans, to David, nice to see them. Dave, have you got many? Plans Sorry, carry on. Have you got many plans for the St Andrews Society this year? Or what's the? Well, I, as you know. Um, Fun enough, we were talking about education. I'm I'm very proud of the fact that we started the scholarship at Queen's University for Scottish students who have come over here, and we, and we hand out that a, a scholarship every year to one lucky recipient. So we we do fundraising for that. So everything, as you know, Paul, is just basically ground to halt. Yeah. We normally have a kind of golf days, we have Kayleys, we have burn suppers, we have the big night in St Andrews uh, day, which this year we haven't been able to do. But hopefully when the when the vaccine comes on board and everyone's back into the party mode again, we'll get out there again. Being, seeing you, and, and, and I always wanted to do this, but we should have a whiskey tasting and, and, and get everyone down to, to support yourself as well, because I think this is fantastic. I think the knowledge that you're giving on, on, on the nine different whiskies was great. And uh, we'll, we'll get that lined up as well for you to do something for us as well. Ach, Dave. If that's okay. 100%, yes. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. And, Dave, I'll, uh, take, I'll, I'll, I'll take you off just now and listen. You, you, can, uh, you, can, you can listen in the background and you can do what you like. I'm going to have a couple more minutes on here and then we'll be done anyway. But Dave, thank you. You're delighted. Much. Been a pleasure and thanks again and we'll speak to you soon and, and good night everyone and hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, whiskies in, in full. Shiri Maha. I've obviously you. had too many of them now, so I'm speaking fish. Cheers now, ah. guys. See you Cheers, Dave. Oh, he's good, crack. He's good. He's good. You know what? He, was, he wasn't he pushed. Oh my God. No, no, we've seen <laughs> Dave pushed. I've seen Dave. I've seen Dave pushed. We have seen that in real life. He's, he's, he's good pushed. You know what I mean? So, uh, okay, you know, that's good. Oh, cheers, Connor. Yeah, listen, good night. Yes, any any, any downfalls? Anything that you'd be like, ah, no, I would take that out and I'd throw it down the sink? No, nothing that would be... No, I'd say all nine were fantastic. I mean, usually whenever we would have a whiskey club tasting, there's maybe one or two that's a little bit questionable. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Why, but you wouldn't necessarily go back to it. But I'll be honest, I'd be more than happy to revisit all nine of those again because I really enjoyed them. And 
great kind of diversity in flavor profiles as well, which is really good to see as well. So no, I really enjoyed them. Yeah, I'm I'm blown away by that hazelborn. Like, I'm just... so good. <laughs> Was it your favorite? Nose on that, yeah. Tonight, tonight, it's. I mean, tonight is a toss up. I think between the hazelborn, the that brooklady is uh, is mm. is stunning. And uh, you love your rum casks. Yeah, yeah can't go wrong with that rum cask. Oh, I, I, I love my rum as well. Like I love my rum. I love my rum cocktails, and that one's really good. I really yeah. like. I really like the Isla. I have a cool Isla. Um, mm. Cool Isla would be nice. That yeah, that good, would yeah. be. That would be. You know, they, those three are definitely for me stand out. But I yeah. haven't found a bad one. I think you know, challenging. If I've got a challenging one, I would maybe have to go back to the Ockentoshin. But even then, it's not either. I really like it, and the more I went, I, to, really I, kept it. On. I, I liked it. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying, but it's, it, to me, it's just, it, it, out of all of them, that's the one, if I was to, to have to be go back and be maybe critical, I'll probably go back there and try and, like, work it out more. The rest, pff, yeah. I didn't, I didn't get a lot from the Orientation. Yeah. It was, yeah, uh, it was a tricky one. Yeah, the the Longmorn, the Longmorn was excellent, I thought. Oh, I loved the Longmorn. Yeah, so yeah. It was, because I was not, you're not expecting from the Longmorn. I mean, let's be honest. You don't no, expect that was that was spiciness, very, do you? Very, very. No, very. what what, what Longmorn has that spiciness? That, that PX finish is making you know is making it really spicy. So listen, yeah. that's a great crack. Thank you very much for you guys that joined us. There's other, there's obviously loads of other people that have come in and joined us um, and who are doing tastings, which is great. So thank you very much for that. And there's, I think it's been lovely having a big commentary. I really look. To, to be honest. Really what we do it's a sense of community amongst everybody like i love the fact that everyone wants to get involved discuss yeah. whiskey like th there's such a strong sense of community both in terms of irish whiskey and scottish whiskey and it's great to get everybody together virtually and just like talk about what we love discuss the whiskeys try them just yeah it's brilliant we still get to do this i had i, I had I had about i don't know maybe 10 maybe it was a bit more but r roughly about 10 different people from outside of uh, outside of ireland who wanted mm. to do this tasting and i couldn't i just didn't have the turnaround time to get them into the box and get them shipped out uh, in time for them and they, 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 they you know they'll be kicking themselves you know if they come on here and, and, they, and, they've, and they've seen the, the commentary or they watch this at a later date but um look there i use two bottles of each uh in one case i actually used three bottles because it was a smaller bottle and so there are a couple of measures left now, uh, which uh, you know, which people can get hold of. But I think that you know, and maybe I'll get them out to those foreign, for foreign foreigners at some point if I if I can. But they just couldn't join us for the for the live tasting. Um, and I think that you know we've got just to keep everyone in focus. You know, you're going to see plenty of tasting. So you've got yeah. every week now, uh, starting two weeks time. No problem, Zoltan. So two week in two weeks time, you're going to see. Uh, a tasting every couple of days, which is a, a very s a select amount of whiskey is going to be sent out to random people. It's just going to be randomised. It's not going to be, um, and yes, Kit, I will trim my beard. I'm actually I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking about what to do with it. I'm thinking about, you know, do I shave it off? Do I do like, or do I do, a, you know, like just this? Or I, I don't know. But I need to do something. You're quite right. <laughs> Kit Charles is he's here for the banter. Like, I like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, not, got, it's not. It's not a whiskey tasting without Kit. I know, I know. But we've we've got an um for Paddy's uh, for Paddy's weekend. So there's a three day three day, uh, three day um Paddy's session, which are three different um boxes. One of which has already been agreed. It's the it's the Cologne uh, lineup. So the seven Colognes uh, and two we special numbers in there. And then yeah, there's a, anyone that doesn't know Cologne, that will be one that will well be well worth getting involved in because yeah, well, I think about it. Comes up with, it's just it's, it's on a whole different level. It's fantastic. Then we've, got, then we've got a premium box which will include um, there's a couple of new releases now coming out of the Middleton Distillery, um, which will be going in there. Um, yeah, and I haven't decided on the third box, but um, yeah, it will be it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Here for the embassy, we go. Came late, love the look. Like, oh, he's talking about you. Hey, Kit, Kit's talking about your look. Um, so, look, plenty to come, plenty, plenty to, plenty to look forward to in the next, um, in the next couple of months. So, listen, glad that everyone turned up, glad that everyone had fun. Uh, and listen, we shall see you all soon. Niall and Louise, cheers for coming off the chat. Dave, really do appreciate what happened tonight. So, and if listen, if people in the future are looking out for uh, uh, an amazing 
he is amazing. He's a, he's a very good piper uh, and loves his poetry. But listen, um, David Pratt, he is definitely one to look out for. Yes, and thank you very much. Cheers, Connor. Good. Good night, everyone. Listen, thank you very much. See you all soon. Thanks for having us, Paul. No problem at all. Bye-bye. Have a good night.